Hello everyone. Hello. Hi CB. How are you doing? Hi CB. How are you doing? Hi. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Good as well. I mean, uh, interesting day today. A lot of Absolutely. games ahead of us, I guess. I'm just changing my last settings on Discord, and we should be golden right now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean. First of all, as I promised, right, different beard style every, uh, it's hard to see, I guess, but it's a small ponytail, right? So different beard style every group stage. And uh, yeah, you promised as well that today we will have a lot of uh, interesting games, a lot of interesting stuff happening. So what's ahead of us today? Yeah, I think today is going to be very, very exciting. Um, we've prepared some highlights as well from previous uh, games that these teams played. Um, but we've got three amazing teams, I think. One of them is new to the tournament scene, it's Royal Legion. Uh, it's your house as well, so you know more about them than I do. Uh, the other two are Ragnarok, also from EU2, and we also have Goblins from NA. Uh, Goblins is a Heavenly Kingdom, and they quite often play versus Pondguard on the NA server for the Territorial Wars. They've also been playing at Core Tournament, another tournament uh, that's been organized. So they have some experience with tournaments. And we've seen Ragnarok, of course, in our Tournament 1. Uh, they played against Bondguard as well, so they have uh, faced some uh, NA teams before. So there's a lot of history in this group. And of course, this group is going to decide uh, our finals, right? Uh, and how exciting is that? Yeah, yeah. Today we will get to know who will be playing further on into the tournament. So this is definitely interesting, interesting day to day. I mean, on top of that, I don't know how about you, but at least here in Warsaw, we have amazing, beautiful weather. I was just walking with my dog. It's like 20 degrees, no yeah. wind, pure sun, you know, nice ladies walking around uh, already. Uh, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, My girlfriend is at the beach right now, so I have no idea why I'm here, but so I do hope the games are going to be amazing. I mean, you know, your girlfriend and uh, other stuff is other stuff, but then Conqueror's Blade is at the end, Conqueror's Blade, right? I mean, what can you do? <laughs> hope she's not watching. <laughs> In a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is still there is a delay on the stream, so worst case scenario, I will just uh, mute. <laughs> yeah, we just clip it. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> the other way around. Yeah, and uh, we have actually quite a lot of viewers today. I mean, uh, interesting games ahead of us, so I guess I know why. Uh, let me set up the game timer because we have around 25 minutes until the first game will start. And I need to also mute my game in the background. Give me a moment. And uh, yeah, I guess we will be ready with everything. What's ahead of us? Uh, yeah, so as you said, Group D, three teams. You gave us a, a bit of uh, introduction already. Uh, mentioned that, yeah, Crippled Squad, one of the, one of the teams from uh, from EU2 is, is actually my kind of, kind of, I guess, maybe, but not sure, friends, let's say, <laughs> from my house. So I hope that they will be able to, to do something nice, but uh, yeah. And let's see on the chat as well. We have a lot of kisses. Hi, guys. Hello. Yeah, exclamation mark help and exclamation mark bet. I see someone is already writing those comments. Use them a few sometime back. Yes, guys, exclamation mark help. You can write this command and the bot will tell you all the commands you can use during the stream. You can check the details about the standings, the prizes, maps, whatever. We'll guide you through it in a moment, but uh, you can also do it by yourself if you cannot wait for this thing to happen. So, exclamation mark help, all the information you can see is available there. Another thing, useful command is exclamation mark bet. There is actually a betting competition, and today you are fighting for 200 sovereigns. You can bet for whoever you think out of these three teams will get out of the group stage as the first seed, as the winner of the whole group. So you can go exclamation mark bet. You just need to provide your in-game name and uh, pretty much the Twitch name, and then you can select one of the teams, one bet per person, but uh, uh, yeah. I guess I'm talking without changing the screen a little bit ahead of myself. 
but uh, yeah, so I can see Redundant Boom have asked about the rules for the tournament and he have already found the exclamation mark help and exclamation mark rules command quite helpful with all the um, replies of the bot. So good that people are using what it's there to use. Uh, yeah, the stream elements bot is, yeah, it's working fine, cool. Um, in the meantime also, if you are either German or Spanish, there will be German and Spanish casters dedicated for your language. Bot is going to uh, put them in the chat like every uh, now and then, but uh, Ari Toshima is the official German caster, caster and the Professor Alucard on Twitch. He have not started stream, I think, but he will be starting shortly and he will be the Spanish caster for today. We can see Payan. Yo, hello, Payan. What's up? What's up? Congratulations on your win last week. We have Payan from Pondgard. Really very hyped for the tournament. Uh, thank you all as well for the follows. I can see amazing amount of followers. Let me quickly sprint through them. So we have Durer, Makuze, uh, we have Redundant Bam, Profis, Nopart, Shikaka, Ad87, Notmate, Prague, Otessus, It's Always Dance, Random Runners, Rock the Devil, Anarchy, It's Xabox, Marcy Payne, Barrow, Argreen, Chalo, Keisa, Foxy. Thank you all for the following. Sorry if I butchered any of your names. I'm not native English speaker, so. Yeah, uh, what's the tournament for? Random Runners is asking. What do you mean for the glory of all the servers? This is international tournament. We have people from many different servers. First of all, you get the immediate recognition by our amazing casters team, so me and CB here, right? This is, I guess, this is the biggest prize, I guess, right? What do you think, Absolutely. CB? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I, that's like, oh, that's like your. One of your uh, tick lists for your life achievements, kind of, right? Like plant a tree, uh, play on Ari Tournament 2, get a kid or something, right? <laughs> that, that, that's what you're fighting for. But other than that, of course, you can participate and, you know, show yourself, your skills and so on in front of all these hundreds and thousands of people who are watching right now live. will be watching later on on YouTube because we are uh, regularly uploading uh, to YouTube all the previous games. If you have missed anything or you will not be able to participate with us today whole time, you can check in my description. There is YouTube link. You can see all the previous games as well as previous tournament. Uh, Ari Tournament 1 over there. Uh, Ayan is asking if CB, if you want to play with uh, NA team once more. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, but I think this time I will cast uh, the tournament. Uh, I, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, your help will be highly appreciated. Also, I might say even needed. Mm, so, so good. Hopefully there will be no team issues today. So uh, I can see that there is some problem on German side that some people are missing. So, uh, well, hopefully there will be able to resolve those issues as there is still some time left. Uh, more people betting. Uh, good, good. Uh, Makuzev asking, saying that bet is not working. Is the bet working? Can you guys confirm? Because I can see that already 12 people have provided their uh, answers. And we have 15% for Crippled Squad, 17% for Ragnarok, and 34% for Goblins. Sorry, 33% for Goblins. So I guess it's, uh, it's working. Um... Yeah, what, what do you expect of the, the teams that we have right now for today? I mean, first of them to show up. <laughs> <laughs> with 15 people. Yeah, with 15, show up with 15 people. That's my basic requirement and expectation for every team. <laughs> Other than that, I would expect um, something good and some adjustments because uh, the tournament is already going on for three Sundays, right? So this is fourth Sunday and we have uh, seen teams adapting their strategy, observing other teams, you know, making resolutions, making, you know, seeing what works, what doesn't and implementing some of these things. So uh, 
hopefully you will see even bigger improvements this week. Uh, one exception, I guess, is uh, Endgame team, right? Because they have played like no one else last week. They have came up with tactics and strategies that uh, were really surprising. So, uh, yeah, maybe we will also see some of uh, this unusual thinking today. Hard to tell, hard to say. Yeah, exactly my fault. I, I think last week was such a, an amazing game. I, of course, I played for Pond Guard, but even during the game, I could notice that pace was quicker. The teams were using different strategies, like you said. and. It felt really exciting to even play in it, but when I watched the games back, I, it was even more exciting to watch it because you could see what was going on. Uh, you really did a good job on commentating it on your own, I think. But we really saw uh, last week how exciting this rule set that we have it can be for the tournament. And um, yeah, how many options you have as a team, despite that you think it might be limited. Um, yeah, it's been really interesting last week. Yep, yep. Okay, uh, we have around 16 minutes left for the first match, so let's quickly maybe talk about the rules. What do you think about that? Yeah, sounds good, sounds good. Let's do it. We might have uh, a couple new guys around here, right? So, uh, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, one big thing is here you can see the schedule for the whole tournament. We are right now in 9th May, so this is Group D. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the schedule will change a little bit, meaning that uh, Quarterfinals will not be taking one day. We will be splitting quarterfinals into two days. So 16th and 23rd will be quarterfinals, right? First two quarterfinals will be next week and two more quarterfinals will be a week after that. This is due, uh, this is to accommodate that uh, basically we have quite a few uh, US teams who are going to play further on. And yeah, the time difference is quite big. So we need to start the tournaments later on. And if we would start the tournament later on, then to play all the four matchups, you know, this is best of three as well. So to play all of them through the day, we will end up like in the mid middle of the night, which can be uh, not so good, I guess, uh, for many of, of you. So um, we'll be updating this slide and uh, next week you can you, you will be seeing the, the exact one. But uh, there will be Four more weeks, except today, there will be four more weeks of plays. Two next weeks are quarterfinals. After that, we have semifinals. And after that, we have final and third place game. So four more weeks ahead of us. And uh, yeah, the next one I need to show you is quickly about the bets. Yeah, so if you have not heard me earlier, if you have joined just a moment ago, exclamation mark bet on chat, you can enter the betting competition for free. Uh, you can place your bet on who you think will take the first place in Group D. And uh, after that, we will make a lottery of correct uh, predictions. So whoever predicted correctly, we will make a lottery. One person will be uh, selected to win uh, some uh, back of sovereigns, right? So that's nice. And of course, one entry per person. Uh, as you can see, the prices for the betting are quite different every now and then. As we are going to be extending the tournament, probably the prizes will also change a little bit. But uh, last week we had uh, sovereigns. Today we have also sovereigns. There will be some silver, some other things ahead. So let's not focus too much on that. And uh, yeah, I guess CB, we can jump to the rules now, right? Yeah, absolutely. These rules have been so amazing. Uh, teams really like them from the first tournament, from our tournament. And uh, here they are. So no T5 units, which means no golden units like Pavias with Tussarfi or Rangers, all those units that can really wreck your whole army in one go. Uh, there's also no art additional artillery. So teams can only use artillery that is already on the map, on the ground or on the walls. So they will not be allowed to place any further artillery. If they do, they will be banned or they will auto loss that game. There will also be no doctrines for the units to use, so they can only use their own veterancy lines, and there will also be no runes, except for one that is a piercing doctrine, or piercing rune, uh, the green one, and furthermore, there are no runes. And each player only will have three lives per game, which means that if they die three times, they're out, and they can no longer control the units as well, or bring them in, which means that if a player loses their life too early, it's going to be a devastating loss for their team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have seen as well that these rules uh, create a, how to say it, like such an amazing battlefield and such a vast, uh, vastly different experience for the players and for the viewers. And uh, 
in previous games, right? When you compare it to your standard sieges or your territory war matches or whatever, that indeed those those rules are amazing, and I guess we are hearing it. Uh, people being happy, players as well for the rules. So, so today yeah, should be. And we even saw last week Endgaker at the end of the bell, of their uh, second game. They lost five to six players, I think, at the end, and that really cost them because they were so close to winning against Pondegard. But because they were five or six players out, they just didn't have enough people, and Pondegard could uh, clear, clean them up at the end. So yeah, definitely makes a difference. Yep. And we've also seen that um, uh, even in the first tournament, that uh, actually Endgame is the first one that comes to mind as well then. I think they had two or three hundred units left at the end of the game. They had more than their opponent, but because their players were out, they just couldn't use it. So that was hard for them. But let's go to the group phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, uh, I can see a message from Justin. Tell us about your your wanna mate. Yeah. Not sure what do you mean by that. Your wanna mate. Okay. Uh, rephrase it, the question, please, because I'm not sure if I understand. Uh, uh, and I seen a lot of people writing in chat exclamation mark bet and name of the team. Please don't do that. Exclamation mark bet only. If you write this, bot will send you a link with information on how to enter and where to go. Or I just posted on the chat a moment ago a link how to enter the betting directly. You need to go to this link and over there you need to provide your Twitch name, your in-game name and select the team and just press vote. That's how you need to do it. There is, If you write something else on the chat, it doesn't go in automatically in. So you need to go and into this Google form and uh, manually enter the information. But yeah, we have 11 minutes left. So let's move up to the group phase. So group phase, guys, this is last group phase. We had four groups. From A to D, we are right now with Group D. There are were initially twelve teams divided into four groups. In each team, in each group, as you can calculate, there were three teams, and uh, basically the plan was for having six, six games in each group, meaning that this will give all the teams a possibility to play on attack and defense equal amount of times. So to show your skill, to show you are better than someone else to win, you need to. You know, show that you are better on both sides on on given map on the both sides of the wall, right? Because uh, some maps are a little bit easier to attack. Some teams even prefer to defend or attack or whatever. You need to make sure that you know you, pre you prepare and you to win on the both sides of the end. So that's why we wanted to have the equal amount of attack defense games. And then because of uh, of that, this creates a. Uh, um, opportunity for ties to happen. So we have implemented a field battle tiebreaker rule. Basically, whenever there is a tie, we are going to play after the standard sieges. There are going to be a, a round of tiebreakers, if necessary, of course. And uh, this will be held on the field battle in Conquest game mode. After group stage, of course, we have the final bracket. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have eight teams there for sure. Uh, we know there will be eight teams there. Uh, it's going to be a best of three. And like you said, there are going to be two days of quarterfinals and then a semi uh, third place match and finals after that. Um, so those will be really hard games. Uh, the difference, big difference there is that teams will be randomly chosen to be attacker for the first game. Then they will swap and they, then they will swap again. So which means that one team is going to attack twice and one team is going to defend twice. So that might influence, uh, depending on the map, how teams have to play against each other. But it's definitely really interesting. And we'll see who is going to be uh, in the final in a couple of weeks. Sure. Uh, and the last thing to talk about is maps. So the map system, how we implemented this for the ARI Tournament 2, uh, which is quite different. ARI Tournament 1, we had only one map. Right now, we have selected those five maps. Wal Walford, Daswofort, Kura Castle, Harbor City and Valley Fortress. Those five maps were posted before the tournament had started to all the team captains of all 12 teams. Each team had one vote and they have voted for the maps they don't want to play on. Two maps which had the most ban votes 
where Das Wofford and Valley Fortress and they are eliminated fully out of the group stage. You cannot, we cannot play on them. You will not see those maps today. There are remaining three maps, Walford, Kura Castle and Harbor City. Those maps we will be able to play on today. And how we will select that is before each match, like matchup, right? We will be randomly selecting, selecting here on stream about five minutes before the match starts a map. And one of these three maps will be randomly selected. Teams will have a few minutes to prepare and then we'll jump into the fight. Teams will be fighting on the same map for their same initial map chat, right? So let's say we have uh, Crippled Squad fighting Goblins and the map which was chosen as a wall fort, right? So they will one attack, one defend on the wall fort, and then they will switch places, but not will, will not switch maps. So they will have equal opportunity both ways. And uh, I guess that's all for the rules, right, CB? Yeah, I think so. And we've seen Walford, we've seen Har Harbor City, so hopefully we'll see Core Castle this uh, this week. Would be fun to have all three uh, three maps being played in the in the, in the group stage, right? Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for the rules. Correct. The only thing we have left maybe is the standings. Um, we know a couple of teams um, from the group stage that will face up in the in the finals. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can go over those as well. Let me get it ready for you and meanwhile we'll have to figure out what we're going to do next yeah because since that there is going to be the small change with the teams today uh, we are still waiting on the final final confirmation and uh, they still will one team will have some time still but uh, yeah seems like they will not be able to and so maybe we'll have only two teams right now we'll see in a moment uh, in the meantime I can see a question on the chat. If you bet, does that mean that you can lose the bet or can you only be lucky and win? Uh, Mark Kuzak, uh, the betting is free. If you enter the betting, you do it for free. You don't lose anything at all. So if you have selected a team which will be um, going out of the group stage with first seat, with first place, they will be uh, you will enter the lottery, right? And then everyone who selected the proper team after the stream here live on, on stream, but after the games, I will be making a lottery live on stream. You will see who is the winner, right? And then as a winner, I will then send you the prize. So you cannot lose anything. You can only gain stuff, right? As the betting is free. Yeah, exactly. Also, I can see the sorry. Also, I can see the question on the drops. So basically, for the drops, guys, we have uh, drops active right now. You just need to click in the top right. Uh, there is your like account figure. You go click there, and you have drops inventory. And uh, over there, you can see your uh, drops progress. And remember that every now and then you need to um, take the drop out to be able to get the next one. Pretty much so. Don't forget to do this as we go. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead, Parisi. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Good explanation there. So what we know for quarterfinals is that uh, the first match will be Eclorides versus the second place team of today. Okay, so it's either it to be either um, Goblins, Triple Squad, or Ragnarok. And then match two for the quarterfinals will be Pontegard versus Lamalands, the NA team versus the E1 team that uh, Lamaland really showed interesting strategies already in their group. They had a great mix of units, so interesting to see them face up against each other. Match three will be Kittens versus Endgegner, uh, the Russians versus the EU2 fanboys. And uh, match four will be Group D, first place team versus Nexus. And Nexus is the veteran team that really surprised us against. Um, uh, Actoritis, it was uh, with their extremely quick second game that they won. Um, I think it was one of the quickest games we've ever seen in a tournament. Um, but they were really, really good at attacking. Uh, if they get attacked twice in the quarterfinals, we might be in for, uh, for a great series there. Sure. Uh, ah, okay. So, seems like Alucard uh, is not streaming today. I was not aware, sorry, for that. So, no Spanish stream today as he's getting vaccinated. Guys, when you have a chance, you should also do this. It's important, right? So, uh, yeah, but let's focus on the game right now. And for the game itself, uh, uh, yeah, CD, I guess I need to leave you for a moment because we are going to 
select a map right now. So yeah, I will right. be back momentarily and uh, yeah, take care. Yep. See you in a bit. Blessings. Hello. Hello, Combo. If you can give me a moment because oh, I need yeah. to prepare. So how are you guys feeling on this beautiful Sunday? How's the weather in German, Germany? It's it's 23 degrees for my, for mm -hmm. me at least, and yeah, it's pretty it's damn good. damn hot. Same here. Yeah. And for you? Uh, it's beautiful. It's purely beautiful. 20 degrees, no rain, nothing. Uh, beautiful Polish ladies, you know, nicely dressed, walking around. And, uh, everything is is beautiful. And I am ready for the world wheel spin. <laughs> Perfect. So, how you feel about the first game, Crippet Squad against Goblins? How I feel? My feelings currently are in very strange place, mainly due to the fact that uh, I don't know too much about uh, Goblins team. You know, I know the Crippet Squad guys. I know that uh, they will try their best, but uh, Goblins, I have not seen too much from them. So, this is a big. Uh, for me, how will they perform? I guess we shall see in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm uh, ready whenever you are for the map selection. Yep, a moment. Ein moment. Jawohl, mein Freunde. Gut, äh, dann geht es jetzt in das Wheel Decide. Es startet. Ja, natürlich. Ich, ich. Harbor City. Das ist Harbor City, ja? Yes, Hafenstadt. Yes. Hafenstadt. Hafenstadt. Oh. Exactly. <lacht> Was ein schöner Name, ja, ja. Great. All right. Have fun, guys. Have fun. Bye, bye. Yeah, you as well. Okay, bye, bye. bye. Welcome back. Welcome. <laughs> oh, not sure if you have heard, but, but tell me. Uh, we have Harbor City. All right. That's that's good, good as well because the NA teams know how to play that map, and we've seen them last week on it. So um, excited, nice. So you feel like they will have the biggest chance they can over there? Well, let's let's look at it this way. I do know that Goblins have sallied out against Endgegner on this map. And it was very successful. Um, I hope we can show a clip maybe later, uh, or maybe you can even show a clip from today's the game if they do it. Um, and they were really effective at it. Um, they love to use CAF and they are amazing at it. Um, so yeah, I definitely do think it's, it's, it's good for them. At the same time, uh, a crippled squ squad has had the chance to look at all those games from Pond Guard as well as from Goblins. So hopefully they will have something figured out to counter this strategy if they do it. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also seen that from Endgegner that the EU teams know how to play on this map as well. Sure. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it seems like my game timer, timer has been removed for whatever reason. Let me reintroduce this to the screen to you guys. And we have about four or so minutes to start the game. So we can, uh, unless the lobby is not there yet. Yeah, so we probably will have a bit more time. So maybe or so uh yeah so let's try and uh, tell you a little bit more about the teams right uh, as with previous weeks we did some digging and research previous prior to the tournament so i can tell you a little bit in general on goblins they are coming from na and uh yeah you said uh, which house they are from i forgot uh, heavenly kingdom HG. heavenly kingdom yeah. okay they are mainly from Heavenly Kingdom, though, because there is one or two players who couldn't make it today. Therefore, they have asked their nice, nice friends from Pondgard, who played last week, to join and help them fill in the missing slots. So we will have uh, a little bit of mixed teams with Goblins and Pondgard, but at the end, you know, NA team fully. So this is, I guess, uh, fully in the rules. <laughs> no problems there. On the other end, uh, we have Crippled Squad, as said earlier, EU2 representing Royal Legion. They are fully, fully Polish, where Goblins are mainly US and Cana Canadian team. 
uh, why they are playing uh, for this tournament. Unfortunately, we don't have this answer for Goblins, but Crippled Squad. They say that one of the casters mobilized them to play this, and I'm not sure which one, but... Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I, I'm curious as well. Maybe we'll be able to ask them in the post-game interview. Uh, for their um, for their experience, the crippled squad in average they played around 1.5k, about 1,500 1, hours into the game. So they have quite a lot of um, quite a quite a lot of experience, and they aim to win a group, and they want to have some fun as well. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. They want to play aggressively, like they do on territory war and sieges and they will try to surprise their opponents. So what we talked about a little bit earlier with some unusual tactics we have seen from some teams previously, maybe they have come up with something amazing as well right now. So can't wait, can't wait. When it comes to the territory war achievements on the other end, uh, Goblins, they are fighting versus Trinity Alliance versus Fondguard for the long time in the territory war. So this would seem that despite their territory war uh, battles, they are still able to be uh, on top of that above, right? And join their swords together in one march against Cripple Squad today. So this is very happy that uh, we have seen not only today, but also last week, a lot of sportsmanship, a lot of good, um, you know, adjustments from the team. Teams are really willing to uh, be, uh, you know, to, to remove some of them prayers to make it equal or, you know, they didn't, you need, don't need to ask, right? This is all about making this as equal, as fun as possible on the same rules, you know, to, to play, to play it nicely. Uh, for the Goblins experience uh, on the tournament, on the other end, six of their line lineup uh, have played on tournaments before and nine have not. So we have about 50-50, uh, around 50-50 mixed, uh, mixed experience. So hopefully the, the players who have played, they are all here and will be able to support the, the newer, the newcomers, right, to the tournament scene with their calmness and their experience. For the crippled squad on the other end, they were in territory wars. They are fighting for the main goals uh, several times, but they always missed something. Like last week uh, on Algolia, they were fiercely fighting but it was very close. Unfortunately, they were not able to get it. Uh, for the Conqueror Blade achievement, the team captain is saying that he has over 1,500 level and he still didn't unlock his Supreme Commander. So, <laughs> so this is achievement and a half, I guess. And uh, yeah, also, I don't know if you know, but uh, the team captain has a brother in the squad. So they are Levanoga and Pravanoga together as brothers. And uh, for the tournament uh, uh, experience, uh, they as a team didn't participate in any tournaments yet, but there are like few players who, who did long time back played in the um, uh, official MyCom uh, tournament, right? The Warlords League. So uh, mm. we'll see where it goes. And what else can you tell us about the players for the both teams, CB? Yeah, so uh, let's start with Goblins for me. Um, in the games we've seen and play for Zangegner, we've had uh, Chalau and Wai Xiao as, um, as their star players. They were the MVPs and uh, Chalau is there today as well in the lineup. So definitely one player to look out for. And we also got Pion and Targodon for Pondegard. They were uh, two of the star players from Pondegard that have also joined Goblins today. So those are definitely players that we look forward to, to seeing. Um, and then there's a lot of new players, right? So we don't know too much about them from the tournament scene, but we do know that they are all ranked re really highly uh, on the NA server as well, because the Goblins, which is Heavenly Kingdom, uh, during the Territorial Wars, and Pondguard, uh, which is uh, also the other big alliance on the uh, NA server, um, they play against each other for the uh, Territorial War win every season almost. So those two alliances, or those two teams, are like at the top of the standings. Um, we know that Royal Legion players are uh, also fighting, like you said, for territorial war wins. And we know that their players are really good. But we have to see if they are just as good as um, these really, really high ranked players from Pond Guard and uh, Goblins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. 
that not nothing too much too much for me for for this one yeah cool uh right now most of the players are in the lobby we are still waiting for one person to join so we will be starting very shortly with the games and let's see the chat guys a short remind reminder as well if you have not placed your bets yet this is the last seconds last seconds you can place the bet exclamation mark bet you go to the google um sheet and you can enter your prediction over there today we are fighting for some sovereigns also don't forget to take out your twitch drops for conqueror's blade as we are here having the official twitch drops supported so um i will be closing the betting in a moment before the first game starts to ensure that you know this is uh, this is clear but uh, yeah in the chat uh, where are goblins from hunter's asking they are from na but yeah i best i guess we talked about this in a moment mm. no tire i don't want to sink rammstein thank you uh, <laughs> I will make you a mod uh, CB. I can uh, see how I can do it. So, go ahead. Quickly, not sure uh, if I can do it directly from here. Of, uh... Uh, yeah, because you try to put some link in, right? And it, uh, it blocks oh, you. Yeah, yeah. It blocks you in, so uh, I will make you a mob in a moment on my chat. And then, yeah, uh, Kappa Instinct saying that Ragnarok might have chance for clean sweep. Well, that didn't, uh, this message didn't age too well <laughs> because the Ragnarok are out of the tournament. Unfortunately, they were not able to get all their players here today. So, uh, yeah, they, they they missed four players, I think, right? So maybe if you have contacts at Ragnarok and you have to, or on the tournament server, you can maybe uh, text them and maybe they can still arrange something. But yeah, for now they are out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can see that there is still uh, the last player is still like uh, finishing his setup. So apparently around four minutes. Uh, yeah, we will start around four minutes mark maximum. Uh, cool. Uh, so this is out of the out of um, out of discussion then. And uh, yeah, and who else is uh, I am subbing in for goblins. So cool, cool. Good luck, Payan then in your game. Uh, Ah, so the permit is not this uh, this one. I can see more people betting. Cool, great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, considering the map, right? We'll be playing on CB. What do you think will happen from what we have seen previously? Yeah. So let's see. We have uh, World Legions as the deckers first, and Goblins as the defenders. So as I told you. I'm really curious to see how many CAF Goblins is going to bring because we know NA likes to play CAF, um, but we do not have T5 CAF, right? And that is a really big part of why uh, Sally Out can be extremely effective because T5 CAF can actually sometimes even go through something like Imperial Pikes or uh, get around for Tabracho, where Army Girls or maybe Salem Cheats or Coutiers or all the other CAF that you don't see so often mm -hmm. um, has less effect on these Sally Outs. But we've seen that it can still be used. Um, but maybe they will do it more inside. And something that we've seen last week from uh, from Pondcard, which was really surprising for us uh, at, at the time, was that they abandoned the A-point on Harbor City completely. They did not want to fight on, on top of the wall because of the traps, right? Because they can be so effective there. We saw that Endgame and did try to fight on the, on the walls. Mm -hmm. They were really good at it. I gotta say, they were flanking from all sides at all times while defending A. So that is um, something that I hope we will see today as well, because if you do look out for the traps on the wall and you move away in time, you can actually uh, flank on the A point quite well and actually beat up a lot of the enemy units. So there's definitely a lot of strategies uh, that are available to these teams. And we've seen that, at least for goblins, that, that they can use all these strategies. And we know from Royal Legion that they have 
the ability to look at all this footage that we have uh, dropped on YouTube. And, and I hope that they can surprise us with something as well. Do you have any information to tell us about real religion? What kind of units do you like? Do, do you know anything that, that can help us? Uh, not really. I mean, they like all units. They, they win all the games and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah. <laughs> the best in the, in yes, the yes. That's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. No, but for real, um, how they are uh, at least up to my knowledge, how they are going to tackle that is uh, is unknown to me because uh, with these tournament rules, you cannot really uh, tell even or like move uh, your uh, knowledge about the team from normal server to to the tournament mm -hmm. here, right? So. Um, usually they like to combine the arms, right? So they are not the team who goes full cavalry only, right? Or something like that, where, where you know, on territory war, for example. Uh, they like to have combined arms. They like to use uh, not standard units. So uh, surprise your enemy with something that you wouldn't expect, kind of, right? Quite often. But uh, definitely, you know, it's it's on territory war, it's, it's easier when you have this, uh, this vast... Uh, uh, the vast uh, amount of uh, golden units to choose from. So uh, here we have uh, limited options, uh, like uh, for example, from the fire units, uh, pretty much only Zikalian militia and Rattan marksmen can be used. So maybe we'll see some of those. And uh, yeah, other than that, hard to say something. But we'll be starting shortly, in a moment or or so. Uh, let me then, good luck, have fun, are flying in from the chat. Let me then unmute in the game and also I need to close the betting. Guys, so if you were not able to enter your betting, it's right now too late. We will be starting shortly as all the teams, all the players are in the game. Loaded in the lobby, we will be starting in now. So let's go. Yeah, this is going to be good. Time to get hyped, uh, General. Yep. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Uh, Trilling, I see your message. Uh, go to the tournament Discord and try to contact them there. For now, we are focusing fully on the crippled squad who are in the attack versus defenders goblins. On the attacking side, we can see one short bow, two medium armors in terms of muskets and a lot of short swords, a lot of short swords very interesting and very important with three lives rule on the other end for goblins we can see two dual blades and two bows so four light armors that might be key thing to observe later on how it will go other than that quite a few moles four of them and four short swords so very balanced setup what can you tell us about the units cd yeah, so far we're seeing a lot of berserkers on the goblin side, which which might be surprising. Uh, maybe they've practiced something or they know something that we don't. We also see some uh, couturiers, I think they are, uh, and army girls, but not too many. So uh, they look to go try and go aggressive with the berserkers. And actually, I think they might be really good on top of the walls as well, uh, because they have so few uh, uh, models in their squad, which makes it easier to dodge traps, although they can also go ham and just ignore whatever commands you give um, and for the royal legion side we got pretty standard setup with shields pikes and also some javelins and some calf so pretty all around well first team i would say for units cool and yeah uh, quite a few berserkers and uh, new season units on goblin side so i will be keeping a close eye on how will they use it uh, i can see some hype in the chat come on hype up hype up let's go first game of this sunday we will see crippled squad attacking goblins defending on harbor city game starting right now excellent and also i do want to hype that there we have two dual blades in this match We've only seen one before, and now we got two. This is going to be fun. Yeah, we'll see how will they work. Starting on, a lot of tournament, uh, a lot of the um, artillery is going to fire immediately on the tournament. You cannot place any additional artillery, as we told earlier. So only what is right now here on the map can be used. So early trebuchets going to clean up some of the initial artillery. 
also a lot of fire is going to happen to destroy these cannons. Remember that attackers for most of the time or, or pretty much on every map have advert advantage when it comes to artillery. Not only they have more cannons and so on, they also have a lot of trebuchets to use. On the top you can see 14 steel left for the attackers. How we can see right now defenders still have few cannons on this flank. They will be able to clear up the towers as they did one right now. The left tower is dead. Very nicely done in terms of shooting. Middle cannons unfortunately gone. Huachas left still so they can still do some damage to the units. And here on the right side two cannons left but they are under very 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 heavy fire. Will be going down shortly. Um, yeah, uh, when it comes to the statistics though, we don't have any losses yet, so not too much to talk about. I guess we can go with a short view of the players. Here we have Chalao. Something that is interesting is that we can see that uh, the Goblin Squad has set up their defenses on both stairs. Um, so left and right, they got pretty equal units on both sides. But they are not defending the small gate at all. And Royal Legion has two players there, but they are, don't seem to be willing to open that gate yet. So I'm interested to see if they uh, learn from Engager and maybe will open that small gate uh, somewhere along uh, in, the, in the next couple of minutes. I don't know if you have noticed that, but... It seems like Royal Legion, every player is having the same, uh, they're looking the same. They have the same skin, the same hairstyle. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's so... Their team outfit together today, they are really ready for this game. So the art and style uh, cooperation is on point. We'll see if this will help them in any way to cooperate during the pushes and engages. Last cannon left here on the right side, still under heavy fire. And seems like goblins are doing a great job with the artillery. Look at that. All the towers were destroyed at least once. And a lot of time lost for crippled squad because of that. Yeah, quite so. Uh, very interesting. We've seen that uh, Pondgard was really good at destroying towers as well last week. Uh, maybe they've learned some from them as well. And um, yeah, interesting to see that this is happening. I mean, if one tower hits, that might be enough. We've, we've seen that in, in all games that we've seen on Harbor City so far. But yeah, definitely uh, some time lost there. And yeah, we... no, no, no real units lost, right? I mean, there's a couple, but nothing important yet. Yeah, yeah, just a couple here and there. Mostly this is great units, I guess, for pushing towers. But we can see something non-standard happening right now. None other team earlier used the small gate immediately, and we can see two people starting to move up over here from uh, from the crippled squad. One more player here, lurking around. They are utilizing the full wide of the of the map to right now try to place and position themselves somewhere for the attack. But still, one more cannon here over. The, I think this is the longest time we can see cannons surviving. This is very interesting because this tower is under heavy fire, it may go down once more. The HP on the tower is about 60% and considering that Cripple Squad have still 14 trebuchets left, this is very interesting that they were not able to either destroy it because they have cannons available over here, just over here, very close, easy to destroy, or they are not trebuching that. Seems like there is no one around as all of the players are focusing on the right side, trying to prepare for the push already gathering there and you can see that goblins is moving over, over yeah goblins is moving over there as well um and this is where the small gates two member two squads from Royal legion might start to have an impact maybe in a couple of minutes because they are on a flanking position yes uh, the goblins were aware of them we have seen one of the musket players it was torgadon who was watching that flank he was throwing some grenades from the upstairs but he's right now here he's in the front line so seems like for the goblins, there is no one watching the back gate, and we will see if this will be a problem. But for now, the push is started. We can see grenades flying in, trying to stop the push from crippled squad. They are moving in with pikes, they are moving with, with shields, they are moving in with brute force. A lot of pikes, a lot of shields, some javelins, and some grenades are flying forward. On the other hand, goblins are very aggressively counter-attacking. This is very interesting considering that, yes, trebuchets, what I wanted to say, are going to fly in in a moment. Quite so. Ooh, and a Cycalium militia throw is flying high over, so that burn is not going to be of an impact, but the trap is hitting really big together with the pike advance. This is really good advance for, uh, for your Legion. 
Yes, and this was nicely coordinated advance because two pikes, one left, one right, same time, same moment, pushed forward. But goblins, they are counter advancing right now with their, I believe this is double advance at the same time, so very heavily on the damage, being uh, right now under the trebuchet fire countered. The trebuchet is a little bit late, but it is going to cut down most of the units nevertheless. So very nicely pushed. Coming in from the left side as well, they got them hammered in here in this corner. So I hope there's more uh, trebuchets flying in because they're desperately going to need it. And as there's another one. Yeah, few people have died, unfortunately, from the attackers. Nice trebuchet in the middle of everything. This is going to clear a lot of the units from the defenders. Uh, still people trying to run for their lives over here. Dual blade Yuki Hide playing big role in killing the players. They are catching them as they run. Another dual blade, Berglibel, look at that, almost killed Levanoga. And will he survive? Half HP, I guess he will. But the first attack is unsuccessful. We have not been able to see. We are not, we are not able yeah. to see what was happening on the small gate, but I guess nothing much. So let's look at the stats. I don't think so. We really didn't see anything there. Yeah, the stats. So we can see that uh, Goblins definitely uh, won that one. Um, they're still up high units, but they also killed uh, quite a bit more. They killed 140 units more than uh, than Royal Legion, and uh, Royal Legion lost six uh, six of their players, where Goblins only lost one. So big win for uh, Goblins here on the wall for the first push, definitely. And still 11 trebuchets left, so this might be quite a brutal damage flying in. Right now, Royal Legion different power, different strategy, different push. We can see similar units. Goblins are already rotating quite early, playing very aggressively. We can see nice flank here from triple berserkers. They are going to harass from the back, charge and deal a lot of damage. So if crippled squad will not be able to aware, will not be aware of this um, of these berserkers on the left flank, they can deal massive, massive damage. For now, they are preparing the push. They are not under heavy fire. Goblins don't have any ranged units over here, none at all. Only some longbow and shortbow shooting here or there, and Torgadon on musket throwing some bombs from time to time. Other than that, zero ranged damage is going to be placed on. On the other end, we can see Crippled Squad flying with the trebuchets. In the middle of the pikes, and most of the condottieres will be able to survive, fortunately. So this is going to be a little bit uh, strange as they are standing on the tower and they are thinking on what to do. And they are pushing. The push is here. We can see they are flying in, moving to the left, moving to the right, advance left, advance right. Very nicely coordinated. Counter advance from the goblins on the left side and full force on the right side as well. Counter advances from goblin coming in, but they are too late. All of them are being dealt with and the left side force is coming. Goblins having one more pikes in the back. They are going to stagger the advances nicely. The second advance have come and the third advance from goblins is right now on the left flank place. Right flank from crippled squad is looking very nicely. Seems like they killed all of the defenders, but they need to really turn around and help their left flank. Trebush very nicely placed. In general, something on the right flank, you could see that the uh, Royal Legion was actually using a, a couple of pike advances at the same time and uh, Goblins actually did one by one. But the Royal Legion were very smart, put up the Imperial Spearman uh, wall on the right side and that way the, those uh, Imperial pikes from Goblins just couldn't get through and I think that allowed them to win on the right side. Um, especially with their Fort Crush shows as more traps keep flying in as they kill off the remaining of uh, Goblins here. Yeah. Uh, and this trebuchet was very nice. Q almost died. Look at him, he's like 0 HP. Uh, Crippled Squad very nicely leaving most of their units on the right side to block supply from goblins. They are pushing with just a one or two single unit, but all the heroes to the A point. They have only three minutes. They have lost a lot of time to get the towers to the point. So they really are working under the clock. And yeah, Berglibar going is going to die right now. Seems like we have another short sword who is going to die in a moment. Give his zones, very low on HP. Will he be able to take someone with him? No, we can see Galahad fighting his fight as well. A lot of fights are happening right now. People are running away. We can see the right flank from Crippled Squad pushing as well. And they are going to be able to close the supply line from Goblins. Goblins right now, Torgadon, the last player on the walls, very low on HP, is going to jump. No, last second he gets taken down, so this is 
nice thing. But we can see Payan lurking outside, waiting for people to spawn. One person will spawn in a moment. We'll see if he will be able to kill something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Ooh. absolutely. Royal Legion made up for that first attack where they lost a little bit, but they are uh, back in action right now. They actually got almost exactly the same in troops killed, 630, as uh, Royal, Le Royal Legion died nine times with their players and Goblins only six times. So still pretty equal, as we're going to have a fight at the bottom of the stairs. Yes, and I really want to know what's in the mind of Royal Legion right now, the crippled squad, because yes, they have only six minutes left, but most of their players don't have units anymore. So this is very... quite a hardcore push with just a few units left. Pushing into full force of goblins who are right like 100 meters away from their supply point, being able to switch their units, being able to bring fresh men, fresh soldiers to the front line. So the fight is right now a little bit staggered. Uh, we can see crippled squad being held in place by goblins. Goblins right now counter attacking. They are seeing what's happening. They are seeing that there is not too many units left over here from the attackers. And they are being the one attacking the front line right now. Defenders very nicely pushing forward. Long bow shooting from the back. No more ranged units. This is something interesting to see. Goblins very low on ranged units. Mostly the front line units. And the fight is here in the middle of the stairs. Yes, quite so. And we can see a lot of Pike Militia and Conochero. So it's not even the highest level units that the uh, Goblins are using right now. We could see Pian on the side with his army girls. He was scouting for all the troops from Royal Legion to come in. But Royal Legion, they need more if they want to win this fight here. Yeah, and another person dying from Crippled Squad. Heavy push right now happening from Goblins. Most of the shields are right now placed on the ground by the mouse and by the short sword. And they are chasing. Yes, Goblins are chasing Crippled Squad back to their spawn. Let's see if the if in these four minutes that are left only Crippled Squad will be able to regroup, rearm, take what they can and push for the cup because with four minutes left i think this is the only thing they have left to do yeah quite so and uh, i mean the units lost is actually equal but you can see at the top of the screen that the units remaining is quite different uh, there's only 685 units left for royal legion so they might not all have their perfect setup ready for this next attack and goblin still 1140 uh, groups left and uh, as you can see, they are gathering on the left side, getting new units as well. And I think Royal Legion is trying to go through the small gate this time. They bring out some calf as well. Um, so they might uh, try and do what Endgegner did last time. But Goblins is already rotating over to the small gate. Uh, as this time, they have scouts on top of the wall in comparison to what Pondguard did last week. Yeah, so definitely learning from the mistakes of the Pondguard last time, rotating immediately. They know they have three minutes only. If they will be able to keep them at bay here in the front line, they will not even have to worry about the cup in the back. So Royal Legion right now, they were able to get with uh, with the units, right? We can see that uh, a lot of different units, some Namkans, some pikes, some shields, a little bit of cavalry only, not too much. Moving into the front line, we can see also some uh, Yanisaris. I don't think we have seen them earlier. They are good on the... Um, like forward fight fight and here it's going to be something like that eight trebuchets still left on the crippled squad and this is interesting that they are not using them anymore come on guys two minutes left why are you keeping these trebuchets for fight is right now happening here in the middle of the plus very nice goblins defense they are going to hide uh, around the corner not getting the fire onto their heads and uh, yeah killing one by one some of the units staggering their uh, their forces some armingers from payan here in the behind trying to clear all the backline and he is going to lose most of them but also kill quite a lot trebuchets finally flying in two minutes left might be problematic pravanoga here from the behind with armingers very nice flank only heroes left from goblins and they don't have any plus point nearby so if royal legion will be able in this one minute to push hard enough kill as many heroes as they can, maybe they will still be able to do something about it. Klopson coming in with some of his armingers, going to duel 1v1 here versus Critical. Critical, 0 HP, look at that! He's wasting so much time and he died right now, but yeah, he wasted a lot of time. Kaisa! Look at the base camp, the heroes from Royal Legion that have no units are rushing to the base camp as they're trying to continue to fight on the supply. 
they are killing units, uh, heroes there. So actually, they still got a chance here. With this one army squad, they continue to keep killing units. Uh, yes, and uh, goblins are dying one by one. We can see another person dying, another person dying, but still 11 left alive and the supplies are coming. One minute, it's going to be hard, but not yeah, undoable. The traps are going to be crucial. If they can keep killing them one by one and they can prevent the units from coming in, then maybe they do have a chance here. Only one minute left. Yes, trebuchet cooldown is 20 seconds, so they will not be able to use all of them, but still it would, should be placed immediately every time, every time possible. And another person is dying from goblins, another one. So yeah, goblins very low on HP. Seven people alive versus 13, and the trebuchets are uh, flying in, uh, not too good, but yeah. Right now Royal Legion seems to be winning the deathmatch on the cop, but 30 seconds. Will they be able to do it for the 30 seconds? Q with 0 HP wasting another s seconds. The seconds here are crucial. Payan as well, full HP. And uh, yeah, we have critical short sword. I don't think they will have enough time. 15 seconds on the clock. So close, but... Goblins, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Goblins manage the clock very, very well. One by one. Nice game. Nice game. And it will go to Goblins at the end. Yeah, well played for them. What an interesting game, actually, at the end. Um, very surprising to see uh, how that went out in the end. But let's go over the star players. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, considering that uh, the timer was running so fast for the first 90% of the game, the last moments of the game, for me, it felt like it's like 10 minutes, right? The last two minutes were so long, very heavily packed in action. So let's talk about, as I said, the star players for this match. Let me mute a little bit the background sound because the <laughs> winning forces are chanting very hard. So on the crippled squad, on the attack, we can see MVP in person of Klopson, two spear players, very nice, on the top of the leaderboard. 132 units killed, 182 for Levanoga, two more players over 100, we have Galahad and we have Pravanoga. So that's very good. Klopson adding to his 122, 13 assists, 5 heroes killed. So definitely MVP, very well deserved as well as 155 participation points, two cannons killed, very good all around player. On the other end for Goblins, well, this is not necessarily Goblins, this is Payan from Pondgard, <laughs> representing Goblins, of course, but yes, not, let's not take this from, from them. Goblins, Goblins Payan, maybe this is different Payan, who knows, being the MVP here for the match. 124 units killed, 3, 2, 5 in the statistics, and 131 participation, very nicely placed. Other highlight players would be Dealer for Life, 167 uh, units killed, 118 on Canadian Cowboy, Chalao, 112, and on 105, very nicely played. And the top killers are is or are yes are. We have three kills joined for Payan, for Seke, and for Yuki Height. So three people, three kills. Coming to the post battle analysis CB. What did we saw yeah. this match? Uh, well, I think the, this graph says it all. It was fighting uh, once they. The, the siege towers hit the wall, it was constant fighting almost. Uh, we could see Royal Legion uh, having to regroup a, a couple of times, but they it kept going. Uh, we got two really big battles at the start, and uh, uh, we got two really big battles at the start. And then it was kind of a scramble. They kept fighting each other in small places. Um, I think uh, Royal Legion used their traps quite well, um, because in the end they only had, what, four or five left. So they really try to keep using those uh, really nice push on the left supply from them in their third attack. And then at the final, it was so interesting to see how they suddenly rotated there. I mean, you could see that they were losing the fight on the supply, but they still managed to get really close by killing off one player at a time. Um, so very well played, I would say, despite uh, losing the first attack uh, in quite convincing fashion to Goblins. But Goblins did manage, of course, to win, and that was because they were so quick on the rotations. They, they were always scouting and noticing what the Royal Legion was doing, um, but although they did get surprised at the, at the final one. So, yeah. Very interesting. And maybe we have the clips ready almost. As yes. I will send you the clip of Tech 2 as well. 
Ah, okay, cool, cool. This one was missing, so give me a short second to also add it into the queue. And uh, yeah, we are ready to go with the clips. Ah, yes, you are not seeing my screen uh, properly, so I need to switch it. Uh, let me know if you can see it properly. And we can switch to the first clip or first attack. So what happened here? Yeah, totally. This was very interesting. You could see that um, this is very trappable, right? And you could see it right here. The trap is flying in. Um, and notice how, uh, at first, you think Crippled Squad and Religion, they are starting to win this, right? They are pushing in. They get to push to the left side as well. You can see that their Sakali Militia was not very effective. Uh, the first bomb hit, the second one went high over. And then this third one that's going right here, I think this hit. And now you can see them, fan they, they start to fan out. But you can see how many players from Goblins are on the left side, close to the A point, and that allows them to keep them in this corner. And as you can see here, they start to push in, and this trebuchet, maybe they should have used it a little bit more closer to their own position to hit the front line, because the back line that's getting hit, I mean, of course it kills some units, but it doesn't prevent goblins from cleaning up uh, crippled squad right here on this, um, on this position. They still managed to get a few traps in right here on the big group, but you could see that, um, their crippled squad lost way more than goblins did. Definitely, definitely. Moving on to the second attack. Yeah, this one looked really cool. Look at this. Two pikes advance, I think, at the same time to the right side. They're also pushing to the left side. And I was thinking at first, ooh, goblins might have the advantage on the right side flank because they still got a few pikes on in reserve, so to speak. But you could see the wall being put up, and on the left side, you could see how they were scrambling at fighting there as well. They got just got stronger units, and of course, they got the trebuchets, and those make a difference in the end on this one. Um, you you told me right, uh, one of these is going to hit big time um, because they're still losing a little bit on the left side. The right side is standing strong, but then I think this next next trap that's going to finish it and um, win crippled squads the A point here. Yeah, and uh, one more thing here is, uh, as you pointed out, the traps, right? The, the trebuchets can mean the difference between life and death in moments like that. The, there was the one trebuchet that was placed a little bit too far behind that it didn't do anything, right? You know, and at the end, when we seen at the cup point, what we know right now, uh, sorry, it's playing uh, all over again. Um, what we seen, this trebuchet is not that bad, but the previous one was fair too behind. And imagine, they needed like maybe 30 more seconds or something like that at the cap point to win. If this trebuchet would hit and they would be able to put the A point for them much, much faster, would it make a difference or would, wouldn't, would it or wouldn't, wouldn't it make a difference, right? Who knows? But these things matter at the end and small mistakes like that add up one to one at the end. And we can see here the third clip. Yeah, totally. And like you said uh, during the game, this was a, a bit weird, right? Because Squipper Squad uh, just won the fight on top of the wall. They maybe should have regrouped. And here they, you could see they just didn't have the units. Um, and even though Goblins didn't have the best units there, like there was two pack militia, I think, some condos, like this, those are good units, of course. But if you bring all your other purple units, you should be able to win this. Um, but as you can see, Goblins started to slowly push Crippled Squad back. And they just couldn't. Uh, they just couldn't get down here. So they needed to get a different approach, as we could see later in the game. Yeah, and uh, ooh, oh, that was quite a quite a game to watch. Quite a game yeah, to watch. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. To be honest, cannot wait for the next one. And we will be starting the next one in a moment. Let me update the clock. And uh, yeah, right now we will be switching the sides. So we will be having goblins on attack and we will see if crippled squad will be able to do something amazing on the defense in a moment good game i mean a lot of uh, gg were flying around post the game and here as well in the lobby so very happy to see all the teams getting along nicely uh, lobby is open so cb if you could join the lobby shortly and cool so we will be starting in a moment and uh, yeah, considering how the fight went, what do you think was the the most uh, interesting thing about the goblins from your perspective? Um, I think the most interesting thing was that they even decided to fight on the wall. Um, I really didn't expect them to fight that hard on the wall. They even did it twice. 
and they showed that they were really effective at it as well. Um, I, we might have to see if we can really watch the game later, see how effective the Berserkers were, because I think that they made a big difference on, the, on those fights. So very interesting decision from them to actually expose themselves to the trebuchets. And you could see how if one trebuchet was missed, immediately the goblins started to punish uh, the, the crippled squad. And they were really effective at it. So I think that was really interesting about them. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the unit choice, uh, I would like to highlight the goblins' decision to bring so many berserkers at the beginning. Um, there was too much things uh, going on uh, at the moment, so I couldn't uh, really uh, look too closely on them, I guess. But uh, uh, long story short, I think they did quite uh, quite a good thing. So uh, yeah, I mean, we will see how they go in the second battle because we are going to start right now. So let's jump to the game screen and let's focus on the second battle. We'll see if they will adjust something when it comes to the units because yeah, might be might be interesting to see what the US team will bring to the sorry North America team because we have some Canadians here there as well. Let's see what they will bring to the table. So same map, other way around. Goblins right now on attack, crippled squad on defense. We can see that goblins right now have switched their um, players quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. We have zero mouse right now, where earlier we had quite a few. Full, pretty much full, heavy armor. Players on the one glaive, everyone else on short sword. But we still have two dual blades and two bows. So very interesting in the attack if they will be able to find their place. On the other end, for crippled squad, one musket and a lot, a lot of short swords. Seems like these guys like their swords quite a lot. What can you tell us about the units, CB? Yeah, you can see that uh, non numerical VS from Goblins. He's a really good cat player. He's bringing two. Um, but other than that, again, a lot of Berserkers. Very interesting. I, I'm really going to watch and see what they do. Um, on the Royal Legion side, on the uh, Crippled Squad side, we do see the Zikalian Militia again, and only one actually on, um, on the Goblin Squad. And there's a couple of Namcons as well as some Gunners. There are Janissaries in there as well. So a bit more range on the Royal Legion side, um, and a lot of Berserkers, as you can see already here on the Goblin side. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, seems like goblins like their berserkers quite a lot. So, uh, considering... Sense, right? Goblins, berserkers, what's the difference, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> when you put it like that, yes, that's uh, the closest you can get to goblins, I guess, with the units, right? Maybe other than the Sons of Fendry, right? The unit who is like, uh, when they run, they look a little bit like some trolls or goblins or whatever, but... Yeah. Uh, if they win, they are Berserkers. If they lose, they are Sons of Fenrir. Let's, let's all right, all right. Let's play for that. Uh, okay, the game opening pretty similar. Early trebuchet cleaning up the artillery. Attackers having 15 uh, trebuchets is quite a lot at the end because you cannot use it for the middle stage of the fight. You can use it early on on the walls. You can use it later on the last cap point. But other than that, not too much usefulness of the trebuchet, so they are spending or investing a lot of the trebuchets right now to clear as much artillery as they can. And we can see that uh, crippled squad, yes, they are using the cannons, but they are not using the cannons that intensively. Or maybe on the other end, goblins are using the, their cannons much, much better, because we can see when crippled squad played on the attack, they did not use all these cannons that much. Right now, they're using them very intensively and seems like all three towers already like 30% towards their way and quite good on health. Here we have 60% on the health, middle tower 50%, the one on the right side is dead, but other than that, quite uh, quite a, a few artillery left unfortunately on the triple squad and yeah, one more headshot. Unfortunately, I believe it was Patio who died to the well-placed shot from the Ballista, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we are right now on the tournament server on the latest patch as well. So Ballistas right now are not super sniper accurate. They can have a little bit of um, 
randomness to their shots. So this was definitely 99% skill and 1% look included in this shot. But early on, one death, we'll see if this will bring a problem to people's squad later on. Yeah, quite so. It was Canadian Cowboy on the Blista. He continues to look for kills on it. Well, well shot by him. Main gate is reached. I think so far they're grouping up on the right side, but they also on the left side already, right? So yeah, we will see how goblins will plan their attack. They have three entries open. Uh, sorry, make it four entries open because the back gate is also open, and we can see critical lurking in the back with just a woodcutter. So I guess this will be easy kill for Patio, but you know one person occupied will not be able to help on the front line. So good use of the deceptive tactics on the back goblins having four entries open we can see what they will do seems like they are lurking around in the middle for the gate we have not seen so far any gate pushes so it will be interesting to see if those two players with berserkers will be rushing the back of the defenders for now everyone moving through the left tower uh, so they're starting to push in and we can see one, two, three, four Berserker squads from um, the Goblins. So let's see if they can do a lot. They're on Torbidon, one of the star players, as well as on uh, Gilicho. As here, there we have the Torbidon getting the kill and I think the Goblins are really wrecking it at the front line there. As the Star Wars continue to follow them up. But let's look on the right side because that's where most of the Cri Crippled Squad is coming in. Yeah, it seems like Crippled Squad chosen a very interesting tactic right now for the defense interesting in the meaning because they will be under heavy fire of the trebuchets what is happening right now and a lot of units as you can see here for the brushes and a lot of shields shields dying to the trebuchets this is very unfortunate i guess uh, because moving from this angle look they have like 100 meter of a wall where they are being uh, where they can be under heavy fire of the trebuchet constantly and this is happening all over again so people not noticing seems that they are not looking to the left side when you see from a player perspective what's in front of you you need to focus on your units it's hard to see as well when the trebuchets are flying in but you should expect them and this is a big mistake in my opinion from the defenders they're going to lose the a point much much faster compared to previous battles yeah, and critically, it's critical that it's actually rushing in with Kev to the supply, which means that the Crippled Squad is not going to be able to get any new units, and they desperately need them, which means that we could see um, uh, the Goblins actually rushing to this uh, plus on the right side and only face heroes, basically. Uh, as critical, does that clean up? And there's some army goes there, but they really need to be quick on getting new units and set up their defenses. Yeah, Tadamish is still alive here for just a slight moment, but uh, look at the players alive. Only nine players alive from Crippled Squad. This is quite problematic, and they are not going to defend this plus. In my opinion, this is a good decision. They didn't have time and they didn't have players to set up defense over here. Considering Absolutely. this is 14 versus 9, the best they could do. That's unfortunate that a lot of Namkans will die over here. Uh, maybe not a lot, but this one squad will die. Berserkers rushing in. Uh, not even full squad, just half of the squad. So not that tragic, but considering how the previous game went. 11 minutes on the clock and still 1,500 units coming in from Goblins. We'll see if the players from Crippled Squad will be able on the defense to play aggressively enough to close in the pushes of goblins when they want and how they want so that they will be able to make up for the poor decisions and the losses they did have in the beginning of the fight you can see the opening trebuchets will they keep an eye out for the trebuchets this and time cap at, cap at the back but it's getting stopped this cap flank was not good mm -hmm. and the trebuchets once more i think that the crippled squad the biggest enemy of them is the trebuchets for now, they lost a lot of units to that. As the attack has done started, let's open the stats quickly. So if you could tell us about that. Yeah, totally. They're losing a couple of units, but I want to point out something interesting on the map again. Critical is going for the other supply, stopping four heroes from uh, from Crippled Squad to actually get units as more uh, heroes from Goblins also good to go to the left supply, splitting up as they start to push in on the right side. 
uh, trying to make the big advance, but Sakali and Militia doing their lot of burn damage there. Uh, units, it's actually 70 in favor for uh, for the goblins, but let's look at this fight, uh, General. Yeah, it seems like one cavalry is going to come from the behind to try to put a pressure on the defenders and then Crippled Squad, defending in the corner where most of the players, most of the teams defend. Very nice cavalry push around the defenders. A lot, a lot of units have died for the defenders. Also, three heroes died. So this is going to be very, very problematic defense. Especially that they have Payan, they have Yuki height on the back with the cavalry. And another player, Critical, is still there on plus, blocking new units flow. And they don't have too many units. Of course, goblins putting a very high pressure. They risk a lot of damage and they received a lot of damage to their units. Just a couple pikes, couple shields are left and not too many units are here on the battlefield for yeah. the attackers. There's only seven, six or five uh, heroes from uh, from, from, from Gold Squad alive and um, the traps continue to fly in but there's no units. I don't think they can even get on the point here. Yeah, they will not be able. As said, just a few units left but enough to keep Crippled Squad in the bay. So, to zero. Interesting game. Very fast. Amazing played by uh, Goblins. Yeah, compared to, to what we have seen in the first fight, I can see a lot of similarities from Goblins. They like to play aggressively. They like to utilize their pikes, their advances, their cavalry in a pinpoint position. So they create kind of a, you know, wide uh, formation, like a wide wall, wide battlefield. And they choose some small gaps in the defense or in the attack of the of the opposite team and they just you know take this pin and put it in this small opening very heavily what we can see on the last point with the nice cavalry charge around this is something that was done very well from their perspective and this is something that was seen also in the previous game so very well played congratulations to goblins for 2-0 very well played Let's see right now for the statistics screen how the teams went. So Goblins being the victorious team, we can see Payan once more, MVP taking the spot over here. Congratulations. 1011. Again, good stats and over 114 kills. Most of those, I guess, were done where he had taken his cavalry and was putting the pressure on the back on the last cap. But definitely from the whole game, very good play. From the player, we can see also Bergliebe, the co-caster from the German team, staking the second spot. Most of those from the capture points, 251 participation, very nicely played. Other than that, five kills on non-numerical with longbow. This is uh, quite an achievement. I can imagine that he was uh, also using his units quite well to achieve this score, but zero deaths on light armor and five kills. Amazing performance. Yuki height on dual blade as well with or this is a good thing to mention. On the other end, for Crippled Squad, we can see just two kills. Levanoga and Just One are the only two players who did a one kill. So this is interesting statistic. Most of the players have died two times. We have seen two players who died three times, so they fought till the end. Unfortunately for the units, it doesn't look too good. We have a couple of uh, players who killed just a couple of units. Most of the other players were around 40, 50, uh, 50 maximum or 63 maximum, 65 maximum. Average, I would say, is around 35, 40. So quite a different performance coming out from these two teams when combined. So, Stevie, what did you think about the game? And if you could tell us about the post-game analysis. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, this says quite a bit, right? There was one really big push, and actually it lasted till the end of the game. Um, Goblin saw an opportunity, and Royal Legion, Legion were slow to react to the supply interrupt from, um, from, from, from Critical, which was really critical for Goblins to win this game. And he did it again at the end, uh, amazingly played by him. Um, I mean, absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm surprised he's not MVP. He should be. He's on my list MVP for this game because he screwed up all the plans that Cripple Squad had and did make them look like a cripple in this game. Um, you could see that at the beginning, I mean, the units lost weren't even that bad for Cripple Squad, but they just weren't able to get new units in time. They weren't able to get in the right place in time to defend. 
and goblins just kept flanking from two three different sides and like you said they put in the needle and they push it through but they also put in all kinds of different needles and just keep pushing on and just very convincing win in this one and i hope we can show it with the clips as well how well they played tell me if you, if you got them ready because yes we want to rewatch those oh we are ready with the first clip you have sent me excellent and uh, uh, let's go into that immediately because i can see only three sorry only two clips yeah i just sent the other one as well uh, the last one is not correct uh, link, I guess. I will resend it then, but we can start the first one. All right, so for the first one. All right, yeah, this, this was the first push, and I, I, I zoomed in on my own screen because I'm going to look at it here as well, and the, the Berserkers were really punishing a lot of the units here for Goblins. Uh, they really allowed them to push in. As you can see, last night they tried to race, but they were too late to charge. Uh, the traps, not that good at the start. And uh, look at this crippled squad. They have to come a long way from the right. So this means that Goblins was fighting like 10, 10 v 5 maybe for quite a, quite a long time. And then the left flank was basically gone. They started pushing them away. And now the right flank is engaging. But look at this. Pretty clear trap position. You can see Berserkers from crippled squad. They get caught by the pikes. And they are just not able to do any damage. And then this trap cleans up the shield wall. And this means goblins can start pushing in. But it's after this that we will see in the next clip that it starts to get really interesting. Um, and look at this. I'm surprised that Quipple Squad kept standing on the A point to, I don't know, like stall it for a couple of seconds. But they need new units. If we've seen it in all these games, you need to get new units as quick as you can. Yeah. So that's a definitely, definitely a problem. And here we jump to the second clip. Yeah, and right here, uh, maybe later we can do it with a sound, but uh, here is, we can see Critical, he is on the supply, and look how long he's there. I mean, it's four, five heroes, six heroes fighting him, and that's the advantage of being a short fort. You, we, we could see it in the pre-game selection that there's a lot of short forts, and maybe they already had this in mind, uh, because they did it again and again and again. And Goblins can start pushing down, and we could see cripple squad they were, had to run because they already lost six players uh, and they were not in a, any position to defend this uh, this supply anymore yeah so definitely the best decision in the worst uh, time right uh, mm -hmm. uh, to to give this up but uh, right now we are jumping to the third clip yeah and right here we could see that cripple squad they were kind of in position but then Goblins started to do their thing. You can see them on the right side of this of your screen. They're already on a supply, annoying uh, enemy heroes from Cripple Squad. They are then starting to push in, but they're also in the center, starting to come in with Cav as well to flank. And this is just going to be too much for Cripple Squad. In this front line, you could see they're still doing pretty well. They're throwing their Sicilian bombs in, doing a lot of flame damage, but they do not have their full squad there, and Cav is coming in. This is too much and crippled squad is slowly getting run over and we could see that they lost too many heroes too many units and they just kept coming in one by one didn't work too well for them and great punish by goblins um in the way that they played this really well played uh, very convincing on the attack i think that this map and we can do it later for this for the discussion but this map was considered to be in favor for defenders because of the supply that is positioned uh, especially the, uh, the supply that's closest to the wall but we have seen that goblins are very efficient at attacking on this map. Yeah, and uh, for me, one thing we have seen right now here, I believe this is uh, from Payan, I'm not sure whose color is here, but uh, for me this is like the uh, MVP play for the whole group stage, I believe. Mm -hmm. Just look at this cavalry coming in here from the corner. This one, yeah, I believe this is from Payan as it's following him. Look what he did. He coming, he, he can notice a lot of pikes being set up over here. Of course, his team is pushing, attacking, taking their attention. And look where he goes in a straight line, just behind everyone, out of the range of everyone and everything. Coming here to the back as much as he can. Most of the pikes have died by this point. Only some pikes are still left here. And he's charging right into the face of the all damage dealers and the backline for the defenders. 
We can see Namkans here. We can see as well some smoke over here, meaning that there were some arquebusers. I'm not sure how many, two, three squads, who knows, but with this one charge, pretty much all the damage that crippled squad have prepared was taken down in a matter of two or three seconds. So very, very good. This is how you should use your cavalry units to the max. And this is purple cavalry only, so good job. Yeah, very, very good play from him. Amazing that we can see it so close in this uh, in, the, in these clips. Um, let's not take away anything from Cripple Squad as well. I mean, they showed up to this tournament knowing that they were going to play, play really, really good opponents. It's their first tournament as well. Uh, we know that it's very different compared to your normal sieges or your normal territorial wars. Um, so very good show from them. We've seen great things from them in, in, in these two fights. Um, but we've also seen that uh, against another tournament team, they're still coming short. And uh, maybe they can compare themselves to Eclorise right now. When Eclorise was playing in our tournament one, they got stomped. And right now they're in the quarterfinals as the first place seed. And they're really doing well also in other tournaments. So give Crippled Squad some time. Keep, keep playing together for the, for the team. Hopefully they will. And I hope to see them back uh, as well in this tournament. Yeah, I mean... Uh... This was the strangest group phase I guess we ever had, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in every group, we had uh, two teams only because one team couldn't make it for uh, mainly, mainly HR reasons, pretty much, right? Where the, not all players were able to show up. Meaning that uh, today as well, we have two teams who played and both of them will advance out of the, out of the group. Um, Crippled Squad taking the second spot and Goblins taking the first spot. So uh, I guess later on we can show uh, the full standings or maybe I will be able to open them right now in a moment and I will just check if this is updated already where we could see the final stage who will play against who. No, unfortunately it's not updated yet. We need to enter the results and close uh, close the group stage like fully in the tool so then it will be displayed so after the stream uh, join the tournament discord or just uh, save for yourself the bracket link which i'm posting right now on the chat and over there you will be able to see clearly who is going to play who in upcoming sundays in the final stage right the quarter finals I can already tell you which teams will face who. Uh, we already knew most of our teams, but now we know them all. And I got them right here in front of me. Mm -hmm. So get, match one will be Eclorise versus uh, Quibble Squad. Match two will be Pond Guard versus Lama Land. Match three will be Kittens versus End Gegner. And match four will be Goblins versus Nexus. And something that's already really interesting is that match one and two are on the same bracket side, match three and four on the other, which means that we have an NA team on both sides of the bracket. So uh, interesting. Definitely. And out of this, um, this match that you told a moment ago, uh, I'm very interested to see some of those, uh, especially considering what we have seen from the teams so far. And uh, the teams uh, like Eclarides, uh, who in their place, they made a few amazing decisions, but they also made a few devastating in the results uh, mistakes, right? So this is something similar from the performance of Crippled Squad today, right? Uh, Crippled Squad. They did some nice pushes, but they also like with the last uh, last cap push, but they also made some big mistakes like the initial artillery fight where they have lost so many time with the, tour, uh, with the towers push, right? They lost the towers, all of them at least once, some of them even twice, so a lot of time wasted. So that's uh, that's interesting to see, and uh, then Pond Guard uh, being one of the, I think from the what I have seen personally on the group stages so far, the Pond Guard being more one of the most uh, poor teams in terms of experience, where not only they have a lot of personal skill, but they have a lot of cooperation tactics. Uh -huh. uh, they have calmness, right? Where they moved down from the A point and they were sure what they were doing. So 
playing like that versus a team of Lamaland who played nice games, but what they said is that they didn't take the tournament seriously, right? We'll really have to see if Lamaland will be able to to get on this uh, on you know this full maybe try hard mode or, or just you know the the real real deal mode because you know best of three if you lose you lose your out so they will really need to try and if they will we can i guess we can see some amazing fights over there the last uh, one i want to highlight from the matches because goblin versus nexus i think will be interesting in a mad in a uh, in a matter of how goblins played today they also played quite quite aggressively quite nicely but the nexus team they were also quite complete team in a matter of uh, tactics so this can be a good clash of titans from the strategy slash tactics perspective but the 23rd may the match free kittens versus endgegner we have seen how endgegner play this tournament other tournaments right they are very aggressive with their pushes they right like to go out they like to take a risk they like to play very aggressively and what kittens do team kittens they played very aggressively as well and after the tour after their games in the interview what they say is they don't like defending they are very they're like looking what they want to do they're thinking too much about the defense and so on they want to play on attack as much as possible they want to be the ones that dictating the pressure dictating the time dictating the place of the battle right so they are both very aggressive teams in the third matchup of the quarterfinals so we'll see if this would be a one big explosion of uh, people trying to make plays all around or will this be a more toned down game because you know teams will have to take the group stages uh, as no one was eliminated, I guess, uh, due to the losses, but all of them um, advancing, right? They will need to use this group stage as the first look on what will happen in the upcoming weeks. And they really need to take and consider the mistakes and fix them as soon as possible. Absolutely. And maybe we can figure out for the quarterfinals, like what our power ranking would be right now. I'm curious in chat, uh, tell us what you think maybe might win in, in all of those matches, right? What are your favorites, favorite teams to look out for? Um, also, match four, Goblins versus Nexus. Uh, we know that Nexus um, is very good in attacking, and we saw today how efficient Goblins can be on attacking as well. So I think those two teams are also e really interesting. And like you said, in um, today and also last week, when we saw Goblins and Pondegard fight, the two winners of both groups, um, they showed really great efficiency at tournament play. And in the first two groups, Group A and B, we saw that those teams maybe didn't take it too seriously yet. Um, so it also means that we haven't seen what they are really capable of if they do show up and uh, put in all their effort and their prep. So I'm really excited to see uh, what could happen in the quarterfinals. There will definitely be some upsets, I think, or maybe at least results that we don't expect. Um, but so far, it... Um, it feels to me like we got a great couple of matches ahead of us next week and the week after. Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, what I told you about a moment ago for the uh, group stage final, uh, for the quarter finals, it's already here on the screen. You can see the ladder. Uh, I hope it's uh, good enough quality for the screenshot or is it, uh, I think it's okay. Let me know if you can see it uh, correctly, guys, on the stream. Basically, yeah, Eclarides versus Crippled Squad, what we spoke with you a moment ago, here you can see on the screen. So, Eclarides and Crippled Squad versus Pondgard and Lamaland, 99% we need to confirm, of course, with the teams, but they will be playing next week. And matchup 3 and 4, so Kitten and Gegner versus, and uh, Goblins versus Nexus, this will be played in two weeks. So, interesting stuff ahead of us. In three weeks, we will see semi-finals. And in four weeks, we will see third place game and finals to top it off. So still four more standards of the games ahead of us. What uh, ahead of us uh, today still is uh, we have planned an interview with the teams. Uh, so shortly we will be talking with the, with the team captains. And then if we will have still some players interested in having some fun, we are going to probably play a death match as well, just for fun, just for your viewer pleasure. 
And uh, at, after that, we will be closing uh, out the lottery, uh, so the betting uh, here live on stream, and uh, we'll be finishing the stream. So about uh, 30 minutes to, to 45 minutes still left on the clock for today. And uh, yeah, let's look at the chat because the games were very, very interesting. So. Yeah, it's a shout out to Mother's Day, all mothers. Maybe they're watching for those teams. Uh, shout out to you. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. For all the countries, this happens uh, because I actually learned uh, like two days ago that Mother's Day is uh, very different in uh, mm. uh, many countries. And for Poland, for example, we have in 26. So in like uh, 17 days, there is a Mother's ah, Day. Okay, so we have so it again then. <laughs> different countries have different uh, times uh, for the Mother's Day. Not sure um, why, but uh, for everyone who is uh, celebrating today, definitely, uh, definitely, all best wishes. Yeah, yeah, totally. And we can see Pion hype in chat. Uh, Pion definitely played really well today for Goblins, but also for uh, uh, for Pond Guard last week. And like you noticed uh, during the clip, he performed excellent today as well. Right? Uh, definitely a player to look out for for this tournament. Uh, yep. in the other rounds as well. Yeah, so I guess uh, will it be the secret stack the tactic for quarterfinals for every team where uh, they are not playing point guard, right? Each team will make a one slot for Payan to invite him. Yeah, exactly. We will see. We will see. <laughs> for for matchups uh, where Payan will be taking one of the one of the place, one of the sides. So uh, interesting, interesting thing to see. Uh, I have uh, confirmation that unfortunately there will be no death match today because some of the players prefer to spend the time with their mothers instead of hearing the death match. So I guess, uh, like, what can we say? Good decision. Good decision, definitely. Absolutely. So we'll be having a short discussion with the team captains in a moment and then uh, the betting competition resolution. Yeah, Itachi Kyo saying that in Sweden it's on 30th of May, so still a lot of time. So yeah, you have a, you have a lot of uh, a lot of time to prepare the present for your mother. Therefore, make sure it's gonna be a good one. And uh, yeah, other highlights from the chat: Kaisa getting the progression bundle, no problem, guys. Remember that there is Twitch drops going on for the whole uh, for the whole game make sure you will click those constantly to be able to participate in the next one, right? So make sure to redeem your prizes. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I still needed to do that. So doing it right now. <laughs> All right. What uh, team captain are we going to have, do you know? Uh, I see goblins uh, already there, waiting also to see with cripples, so we'll be starting this in a short uh, moment. Uh, uh, yeah. Ah, okay, so both team captains are here, so I guess we can talk with, with both of them at the same time. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so inviting the German cast here to our uh, Discord channel. After they will join, we will be starting with them. We'll be starting the interviews uh, in a moment, so... As there is no that much, I guess we can uh, uh, take a little bit more time with the uh, questions and discussion. Uh, so yeah, hope, hope, sounds, hope, sounds hope, hope I mean, that you have the next couple of weeks as well. We already talked a little bit about it, but we can take more time uh, talking about uh, quarterfinals as well. Sure. Uh, yeah, and then uh, on the other end, I guess. Uh, the, the, they, need, they will need to earn uh, a right to speak with us again <laughs> uh, in the quarterfinals because if they lose, they are out, right? So today we can we can discuss with them uh, more freely on what's going to happen and then also uh, what what have happened uh, so far because the games today were quite interesting. So can't wait to 
some discussions. Uh, we are waiting for the German casters to join. Of course, the whole discussion will be in English. They will be joining us shortly and then we can start as well. Guys, as we have a bit more time due to not that much today, uh, if you have any questions to the team captains you would like to know or ask, make sure to post them right now on the chat. There is a stream delay, of course, as this is a professional tournament, uh, but uh, we will be talking with the team captains a little bit for sure. So just add general combo on the Twitch chat, add me and post any questions you will have. So we'll be ready to ask them in a moment. Hi, guys. Hi, Aritoshima. And we have also Samuel here. Berglibe. <laughs> so how did you like the games, guys? How did you like the games? Yeah, might you start? I like them very much because I played with the uh, <laughs> with goblins. <laughs> it was really fun. Yeah, so you had to fill in for the missing player, right? Yeah, exactly. When I joined on Discord again to Ari, I was just smiling because it was really, really much fun. Mm -hmm. um, this time the the team was a little a little bit louder in this in Discord. Uh, we had some points where, like uh, the push on the last point in the first game, the team was shouting a little <laughs> about go home, go home, go base, go base, go home, they are pushing. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun and emotional. And uh, in the second game, same thing, when we, when we were pushing up the tower it, uh, and we saw that there were only a few enemies. It was immediately a call like, push, 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 there, uh, there's no defense there. Go, go, go. It was really emotional and pretty much fun. Yeah, it sounds, like, it sounds very much like what we've seen from Goblins in other tournaments. They are really aggressive and apparently they are also really aggressive in their comms. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, cool, nice. Yep. Yeah, uh, from my side, it was pretty nice. Just can't say anything more. Plus, yeah. very good games. Interesting, yeah. interesting games. Okay, so let's not take any more time. Let's invite the team captains here. Hi, guys. Hello. We are live. Welcome. Hello. Uh, so we have Levanoga from Crippled Squad and we have Profize. Profis? Prophecy. Prophecy. Hello. Okay, from Goblins. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, congratulations on your victory for the Goblins yeah. team, and if you could tell us a little bit about uh, yourself for the start. Uh, Introduce yourself. My team? Uh, yourself, as the team captain. Um, well, uh, hmm. I, I guess I'm just, uh, I'm just here more or less because my good friend Oliver the Golden had, um, he had to go love his mother, you know, <laughs> loving mother is pretty weird not gonna lie so uh i decided to step in and help out today and it was an incredibly fun time uh you know, i'm just here for the ride a uh, dedicated cb player got too many hours in the game you know for a very good game cool and from crippled squad we have levanoga so if you could tell us a little bit about yourself so <laughs> I'm from Poland, I am 18 years old, and I like play Dual Blade. Don't hate me on chat, please. <laughs> <laughs> no hate, no hate today, pure kill and pure good games. Yeah, uh, guys, thanks. so congratulations one more on two victories back to back, back but uh, I guess uh, there are no bad news today, right? As we had only one team, uh, sorry, one team already didn't make it to the tournament, so both of you guys advance further on to the quarterfinals. We will be seeing uh, next week some of you playing, right? So, uh, interesting to see Eclarides uh, versus Crippled Squad playing next week, and then for Goblins, you have guys a uh, week off, and in two weeks, we'll be able to see something from you as well. So, uh, the first question I would see I would have is for the first match uh, where Crippled Squad were the attacking uh, side. So, from Goblin's perspective, um, how did you consider the timing, right? Uh, uh, taking into consideration that you were able to destroy the towers and much, much time was lost 
for the attacking side because of that. And then also on the A point, you were able to hold off the first push quite nicely and the second fight also take took quite long time. So we have seen a lot of time spent on A point. All this time perspective in the first match, how did, uh, how did your team like it? Were you happy that you were able to hold on on A point for so much time or what were the people thinking? Uh, yeah, um, the big plan is to sh destroy the tab left towers because you cannot be trapped on the staircase. So when the enemy pushes the far right tower, you can come up from the stairs, um, wipe their push, then go back down the stairs, reset and wait. Um, we were very happy to hold on A for that amount of time. Uh, the key mistake made by the attackers was not pushing the far left tower because it's just impossible to push, really, in my opinion. Without that, due to the trebuchets on the attacker's side, uh, it's impossible for the defenders to counter push. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah. Yep. Then, and then also, so we know that there's some Bundekart players uh, in your team today, as uh, Pion, of course, getting the MVP as well. Um, we noticed that they actually abandoned the A point last week. Was that something you have considered for today? Well, um, personally, I uh, with, with Oliver gone, I went into everything with a different game plan. Um, uh, we did consider abandoning A, but I personally felt that um, with proper coordination, we could still burn the time to a high enough extent because preferably you can avoid the fight on home point. The fight on home point is going to be much harder than the fight on A, just in my opinion, due to cavalry. Um, we saw that cavalry uh, Armager Lancers came back towards the end there and nearly cost us the game. They had very good flanks on the left mm -hmm. supply. So um, we just were able to successfully avoid that for the most part, and we're able to play our game on A. Cool. Very, very nice input. And I didn't think about it in that regard, but uh, thank you for, for, for this additional input. Um, coming now to Levanoga from Crippled Squad. I also want to ask about the first game, and especially considering how uh, good it went for you at the end, where you almost where you were close to, to, to having this. Um, I want to focus more on the middle of the game, right? So after you have pushed the towers and after the second push for A point, you managed to get it. You successfully captured the A point and the decision that was there was to push for the plus side. Um, what we see and what we have caught on, this, um, on the stream from the, from the upstairs was that there is a big discrepancy in the units, on the amount of units. Many players from the attacking side from crippled squad didn't have their units or they were low on the units while the defenders were able to regroup on the plus side and they were full force so did you consider uh, this push as a, just a try or you wanted to take their attention towards this point and look for some other opportunities what was your thinking behind this uh, uh, so so i think the I saw they have only Pike Militia on the stars. I don't saw a fucking Forte Brasio under, under the, the shields. Uh, yes, but we don't open a, a gate, so that is a, the biggest mistake. Uh, but hmm. I'm so fucking mad about this situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my my big mistake because I call it and oh I don't know I have to analyze, uh, I have to see this uh, from 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 your per, uh, perspective sure and I mean you have time for that fortunately right there is still a few few days uh, seven to be exact for the next matches so definitely hold the whole group stage was there to get you guys some tournament experience because as you said three tournament you didn't have too much of course goblins uh, six of their players uh, having quite a, a few tournaments on their back, being uh, uh, more experienced on the tournament stage, uh, it was, uh, I guess, uh, seen with more calm decisions all around. So, Stibi, uh, coming back to you and your questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, Lewanoga, something that, um, like, we almost thought that the game was over in game one, but then you guys managed to actually almost get the, the final. Uh, with just one army squad, what was your uh, idea there? What, what, what was the comms like uh, at the final push there? Uh, so, uh, what, what, what? 
the Warcraft. the communication. So at the uh, at game one at the end, you guys yeah, were yeah. moving at the left supply, and then you started rushing for the final cap. Yeah. Uh, so that was the one minute to cap. Uh, last uh, a base, so we make a decision to just rush. And the uh, next mistake, we don't open a gate. We have to go by a left gate or right siege tower. Mm. So this gate a uh, lot of time to, to rotate there. Uh, but that was very close. We we do good push to this supply point, but we don't have the time. If we don't push the stairs in me earlier, I think we, we can cap it, but we don't have a yeah. time. Yeah, just a little short on time at the end there. And then, uh, Prophecy, for you, one question as well. Um, we noticed that you were using a lot of Berserkers. We know that you used to always use like a full calf lineup, at least uh, during the games as Goblins. Uh, why the Berserkers? Why so many? Um, I'd say a lot of it is me and Oliver. Um, we, we like to handle things differently than each other, but both, both work very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I went into it with different strategies and different unit composition than he would per se. Um, our guys are very fluent. They can play infantry, infantry, cavalry, it doesn't matter. Uh, we, we have a lot of vets, as you said. Um, these guys have been playing tournaments for a long time. Um, our shot callers have been playing for a long time. Just all around good gameplay from everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Nice. One more question I have uh, for, for Goblin teams all around is, uh, guys, why do you hate ranged units so much? Because for both games, I, I don't think I have seen like maybe one or two or even zero. Did you take at all any ranged units into the games? No, we do not believe in ranged units. <laughs> So uh, you don't believe in ranged units, but I've noticed that you had four light armors, two of those being bows, one longbow, one mm -hmm. shortbow. Did you, um, or, or what was the plan for these heroes? Of course, they are nice damage dealers and they can take and focus heroes and some critical units. But did you, for the whole tournament in the comms, have to um, manage them, like uh, dual blades, come on, take this guy or something like that, or was it more skill and the initiative of, of given players to capture uh, some kills. Like, for example, in first game, when the attackers were um, getting out uh, after first push, the dual blades managed to catch two players and kill them. Um, so from our perspective, um, it, it's very important to make sure when you're making unit comps that the players like these units. And it's it's much more important, in my opinion, for the hero class. Um, these classes are what these players normally play. This is their main class. They play these in sieges, in territory war. So keeping them comfortable in their play style is 100% our goal. And it worked out very well. Um, the ranged heroes were very good for destroying artillery. Uh, we had them shoot the same artillery piece and shut it down so we didn't have to use a trebuchet on it. We could save the trebuchet for if we needed it for walls or for home. Um, for the dual blades, our dual blade players are very experienced on the class, so uh, it's, it's just awesome to keep them on that and the work that they can do is very impressive. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's actually very good. I believe it uh, worked very well for you at the end making sure that players can perform to their best on what they are comfortable with. Good decision, I guess. Uh, so, Arita Shima, moving on to your questions. Well, actually, you handled everything, I believe, like... I mean, we don't play that much, so we have time, right? So, did you got anything interesting in the games? No, not really, like... Does Backley have anything to ask? Like for me, it's it, you. You captured anything I wanted to ask. <laughs> okay, so sorry for just so good. sorry for taking all the fun questions. <laughs> I guess then, uh, yeah. So maybe then a question for Levanoga in regards to the also the classes uh, chosen, right? Uh, we have seen on the on the second game that you went with much. Pretty much all of the team were on the short source. So is it something that uh, you had some special tactics around and did it work for you at the end? Would you like to change it? Not uh, 
Yep, we planned to defending uh, last point with 15 short sword to to ul to use ultimate and uh, but we can't because they rush us. We can't uh, swap a unit because one of short swords was on our, our supply point. So they did a really good job at as an attacker. So good job, Goblins. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so the last question from my end to Prophecy is uh, in regard to the uh, how wide you played on the attack, meaning that you had players, at least one player, pretty much in every entrance doing something, and this seemed to be very well coordinated and very nicely timed, meaning that when you were pushing from the corner on the main point with the main force, right, you had one person who was block or two players who were blocking the plus, you had one person who was flanking with the cavalry, from one direction, you had another one from other direction. So this looked like very coordinated spectacle. Was it something that you had prepared earlier, you know, statically, guys, we do this, remember that, and then you say we execute the plan 69 or whatever, right? Or was it more odd, ad hoc shot calling that allowed you to perform such a good coordinated attacks? Um, it, it was more shot calling. Uh, one thing we noticed was they had two to three Namkin units out, and two to three Namkins is two to three units that can't fight us on the point. So we decided we would full send while range units were still out. Like I said, I hate ranged. <laughs> so does most of NA. And we we full send it. Um, it was a lot of our vets were calling these rotations. Um, a lot of it was independent plays, like players like Pion, um, Crit, Shot Callers, we, we didn't really, really need to tell them to rotate there. A lot of these players that were flanking and at these entrances, outside of our starting setup, everything was purely reactionary. Um, these players were going off on their own intent to shut down their rotations with Cav. Um, our plan originally was we would, you know, we would full send tab left cavalry and tab right infantry, but it didn't end up panning out that way when we noticed that their units that they had out could not fight us. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that we could just take the straight up 15 v 15 and win it. So we ended just full sending to home. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, happy that it worked so well for you. And uh, I can see there is one more question from chat coming to Crippled Squad. So, Levanoga, the question is, what was the general idea for your attack for the A point? Could you share it with us or is it top secret information? Uh, so, at first push, we just move uh, so many Imperial Pikes to the left side to push A and we can't counter uh, an enemy when they come uh, to stairs. So we fucked up uh, on this first push. Uh, and we, I think we don't use trebuch trebuchet. We, we just use trebuchet when we push a supply point, I think. Uh, on A, I don't saw this trebuchet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a few flying around, but uh, yeah, I guess yeah. could be more. But I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so if there are no more questions... Uh, uh... Well, one question I would have for, the, um, for both the team leaders, but we we'll start with... Uh... Goblins first. So, um, how did you weather to the game? Like, did you expect it to be harder or to be easier yeah. than how the matches actually went? Um, hmm. well, I kind of, uh, I, I kind of was spot on with, um, what I expected. Um, I know from VODs that I've seen from the European server, uh, we kind of know their play style. Um, they really like their pikes, so it went exactly as we anticipated it to, especially on attack. Um, you know, stalwarts beat pikes, and that's all there is to it, really, especially on the final push. Um, it was definitely a good fight, though, um, especially the, the first fight. Um, uh, we were not expecting the West Supply push with Cavalry, um, but 
we were overall able to take it out with just sending our short swords to the point. I was very impressed, though, with their coordination, especially with their cavalry. Okay, nice. Thank you. And Noga? So, we, did, we didn't know what to expect. That is our first tournament, so... I don't know. We will... Maybe nervous? I don't know. <laughs> But we will definitely learn a lot from it, a lot of experience. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, um, you both advance right to the final stage, and um, just so you know, um, goblins, you will fight in Nexus in two weeks, and Cripple Squad will fight Eclaridas next week. So. Uh, Goblins, you fight against Nexus. Did you already watch some VODs on them, or uh, did Oliver did do? Um, we will definitely do our VOD review. We'll definitely do our homework. Uh, <laughs> we haven't yet, though. We haven't yet. <laughs> nice, nice. We actually, and uh, Noga. Yes. No, so I got it back. And Nova, uh, you go against Eclaridus. Noga, yes, uh, how you yes, so. feel about that? Yeah, so they are a really good team. They they play really well and rotate very well on, on the map. They use map. They play as as a team. So what well, no, we will see. Time to prepare. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, wh why I was laughing is actually we have talked a little bit on stream with uh, viewers with CV about this, and uh, I consider uh, all of the four matchups that are going to happen uh, in the quarterfinals to be quite uh, interesting in the terms of the how teams ended up. So third matchup, Kitten and Sandgivner. Both of the teams are playing aggressively. They have very aggressive play style. They prefer to play on attack. So we will see how it will go. Bondgard and Lamaland, both these teams have not shown us everything they have behind hidden, right, in the in their pockets. So this can also be interesting. And then Eclidus and Crippled Squad, guys, uh, what we have concluded is that uh, both of you have interesting ideas and the execution of this, when it's done well, like the last push today, was very heavy for enemy to handle. So we will have to watch out for this, you know, uh, the, the overall game will be quite, uh, what we expect is that the overall game will, will be quite calm with, you know, quite uh, good pushes all around, defenses and so on. But then this bam, 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 these heavy hitters coming from nowhere, something unexpected. And when it comes to the Goblins and Nexus, from what we have seen today, compared to Nexus team that they played in, uh, in the beginning of the tournament, they are quite... Uh, uh, interesting in the choice uh, with their with their um, forces being very heavy on infantry and almost no ranged units so you uh, Frofizy bringing this additional input here might be also another interesting point to watch out so the unit composition and so on but this is you know our overall observations I'm sure you will spend enough time to prepare for upcoming matches and I would like to wish you all the best and the good luck for the quarterfinals and uh, hopefully you will be able to be victorious in your quarterfinal games and we will be able to talk once more in your post quarterfinal victory interview guys any closing words from anyone just a good game to everyone we fought um i was very impressed with you all around you guys will do well in your match i hope to see you again later in the tournament yeah Thanks, thanks for good games and good luck. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much to you guys for this discussion and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Really interesting to speak so um, yeah extensive to the teams, right? Normally we take a little bit shorter because we do, we do, we do have the death match. But I think we got some great insights into the teams. Really interesting. What stood out to you, uh, General? Uh, I had the same similar pleasuring feeling uh, <laughs> flowing through my body, considering that uh, especially last week, the death match, where you were not there to 
support and help and also take off the pressure of commentating some of the games. The death match also was 13 versus 13, right? Last week, I, yeah, I tried it. Yeah, so it's like, oh my God, where do I look? What do I talk about, right? Compared to this, you know, her uh, with a tea or coffee, um, you know, very, yeah, exactly. very <laughs> nice and calm discussion and uh, interesting insight, especially the part of the future, right? Uh, we talked a little bit on the matchups, as, uh, as I said to the team leaders, but uh, with this additional uh, input from the team leaders, I cannot, I, I like, come on, please be, be next Sunday. Like, can I go sleep and wake up in seven days or something, yeah, exactly. right? Cannot wait, cannot wait. Yeah, totally. So excited. And like you said, all the matches seem really, really excited because we got like great, just great matchups, like new teams versus new teams, experienced teams and experience, aggressive, aggressive, etc. It's just so hyped for next week. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, like you said, I think today's matches were great as well. Like maybe Crippled Squad um, got like beaten by uh, Goblins in, in a convincing way in the end, but they we they've shown that they can fight really well uh, for on the side of Cripple Squad as well. And uh, I was really happy that we were together for this uh, co-cast because the games were all over the place. Like we were looking at one one place on the map and then the other place of the map, there was something going on as well. So mm -hmm. I think it was also amazing to, to watch and I hope everybody enjoyed uh, these games. Yeah, uh, so I guess uh, we talked a bit about the future. We talked a bit, a bit about the games today as well. Uh, I mean, we talked with the team leaders as well on the heroes choosing, right? How they approach the selection of the heroes, seeing both teams uh, select a totally different strategy. It shows very well how how complex is not only the, the you know the, the tournament of course and you know the, the tournament scene where you operate in, in totally different mode but also the game itself right having mm. this simple which seems like a simple decision like you play short bow or long bow right both shoot arrows what what the hell right at the end it can turn out to some amazing uh, results and uh, Every decision matters, and when you have so much decisions to make before the tournament, and then ten times more during the game, this mm -hmm. this really is a battle not only of the um, of the strength of the muscles, but also of the brains, of the eyes, reaction time, right, and calmness, yeah. right. You need to really observe everything. So, yeah, and and the same can be said about units as well. Uh, we just heard from goblins that they don't like ranged at all. And they doesn't like ranged at all. They like their calf, they like their infantry, they like their berserkers. Where we've seen EU play way more ranged. We saw it from Lama Land really well executed fights with like 50-50 uh, shield spikes and ranged. Um, where they performed really well on the defense. And then we saw Endgegner of course favoring the Zagalian militia with the burn where they were very effective uh, on the eight point defense on harbor city on the stairs which is hard to trap like we just heard as well so it's kind of like two different metas clashing with each other in this tournament and i'm really curious to see uh, who's going to come out on top and how teams will adapt to each other as well yeah and this additional input uh... I wonder if it was a good idea at the end because maybe the teams have set a little bit too much on their insights. Uh, if yeah. their enemies will use this to their advantage, or will was double bluffing, right? Uh, goblins maybe they right now said that they hate ranged units, they hate using them, and they yeah. will they didn't bring any of those at all. Maybe this was double bluff, and we will see fifteen times uh, Namkans in the <laughs> quarterfinal. <laughs> Just my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe 15 nine times Namkas would be a bit crazy, but... Uh, I want to see it happen, for sure. Yeah, I mean, in, in some free battles uh, or or, uh, or whatever, right? When we played with some uh, some of uh, some of my housemates, we have we have had a chance to have a game where we, you know, started at the same time. And for example, 12 of our players ended up in one team. And we did some oh, yeah. crazy, crazy tactics, like, uh, for example, 10 times Imperial Archebusers at the same point shooting with the volley fire. And then what you see on from enemy perspective is just 
10,000 kilotons of uh, bullets flying into your face, which is quite... <laughs> Why not? Like in, in, in a tournament scene, you can do so, so many things in a coordinated fashion. That's, that's, it's insane. Like the, the possibilities are maybe more than what we've seen so far. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for me, the, the closing remark for today and what sticks in my mind and in front of my eyes is this church of the cavalry we, we've shown. Mm. the second fight where goblins were attacking right this uh, this thin line of cavalry one by one you know moving around everyone and everything and just pin point charge into what exactly was supposed where, where they supposed to be charged to they were charged there incredibly and dealt a lot of damage from your perspective cb what if you close your eyes right now what is there in front of your eyes from today one one action I'm seeing critical all over this screen right here. Um, I loved his play, uh, going for the supplies time after time. I, I was so amazed by, by him doing that, and I think it was so smart, and I hope that we get to see it from more teams. Um, but I definitely would love to see uh, the peon uh, calf charge in the back again. If you want to sh show the clip right now on stream, and then I can go away and you can do your betting, I'll be totally happy to rewatch it again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have it open anymore. No, so I guess yeah. Let's not let's not find it. But uh, we'll be uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, that's actually good uh, good information that you mentioned because I was uh, I I would probably forget. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, short rem uh, short reminder that uh, you will you are able to rewatch all the games on Twitch right now, right? Basically immediately. But also, uh, I'm uploading it to the YouTube. Uh, so here in the description, you can see my YouTube channel. You can rewatch the previous tournament where many of the teams who play in this tournament were also over there. Uh, so you can compare if they have uh, grown, if they are better than than previously, or or uh, if they are making same mistakes all over again. Maybe you will notice something interesting. Another thing is that I have already uploaded uh, groups A to C. So if you have previously, if you have missed any previous uh, game days, you can still rewatch them. And this stream today will also be cut into the pieces. So the games that it will be uploaded this week. But also we have in store some secret uh, plan. Uh, CB having uh, his incredible uh, eyesight and capturing all the best uh, actions for you. He have created a library of very nice um, uh, actions and very nice, uh, like the best of the best, creme de la creme of all the games. And we will be combining uh, some of those, to, or most of those, to, to uh, like a short uh, short compilation of, of best tournament um, uh, flanks or plays or whatever. And those will be seeing, yes, the highlights. Uh, ah, I, oh, maybe actually let's spend this moment. I will give you the mod right now because you cannot. Oh, is it again gone? Oh, that's yeah, it, it's gone, but... Yeah, it's okay. So, but like you said, we will gather all the highlights. We will probably show it next week, I think, right before we start. Uh, you can read, like, the highlights from all the group stages. I think group A, B, and C, they are already online on YouTube. Uh, group D will follow up shortly. I think I'll even do it today. I'm so excited to rewatch re the games. Um, and then we will make a compilation of all the groups together. And, uh, yeah, you can rewatch all of those. Uh... Yeah, you should be able to do it yeah, if you can. Now. I can see. If you can I'm copy. Yeah, repost. Enjoy. Have fun. Amazing. <laughs> right now you can. Yeah. You can right now post all the goodies on the chat as well. Sorry for that, but it's fixed now. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Is there anything else we missed? I think we covered all of this for today. I think we did a really good job. I hope at least everybody enjoyed it. And um... yeah, I mean, if you have any feedback, guys, to, to to the casters or to the organization of the tournament and so on, feel free to reach out to us uh, on the official RE tournament Discord. There is a tavern uh, created uh, channel. You can talk over there, and we have seen some conversations, some hype happening. Uh, so you can you can you can post your uh, feedback, or or you can talk around over there. Also with some of the teams, because the teams are on the Discord, so if you have any questions on 
why this was done or, or whatever, right? You know, you can also try to post this. Maybe maybe the team captains or someone from the team will be able to answer to you. So the community is very well alive. And, uh, yeah, the tournament halfway done, right? Four Sundays after, uh, or, or yeah, we've seen four Sundays before, and we are going to see four more Sundays in front of us. So can't wait. Yeah, best is yet to come. Definitely, definitely. And the final will be the cherry on the top, I guess. So cannot mm -hmm. wait for this as well. Okay, thank you, CB, very much for today. I will take a short break uh, right now, like a minute or two, to change the scenes and whatnot. And uh, my dog is very well wake up, so I need to walk up, so I need to give him some food. And then we will be doing the betting uh, resolution. From the statistics, I can see 36 people. Oh, who, CB, what do you think? What, 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 which team had the most uh, votes? Mm. I know NA was slowly waking up when we started. 36, 36 people have provided responses. 36, nice. Uh, I think uh, maybe most people have voted for you. Yeah, I think so. Cripple for Squad. Yes, you're right. 24 yeah. people have placed their bets on Cripple Squad, but not that far away. Second place, Goblins, nine people or yeah. Goblins. So nice. also some support. Watching as well. Nice. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What's more important, I guess, is uh, on the chat. There was very heavy support for both teams across the whole day. So that's uh, interesting to see. All right. Thank you very much for today, guys. And uh, we will hear uh, each other in a couple minutes where we'll be talking about the betting resolution. So thank you very much, CB. See you next time, and thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice. And we are back alive. Uh, Hi guys, we are back uh, live. As you can see right now, I am showing the results of betting competition. And yeah, what you can see right now is here, we have 36 answers in total. 66 people have voted for cripples, 66.7%, sorry, 24 people, nine people for goblins and eight percent which is three people from Ragnarok unfortunately it was not sure that they will participate so yeah so you had support and you didn't make it Oof. Oof. all right let's focus on the winners though so over here you can see all the people who have put their entries in I have sorted out the goblins who have won their first place so we have these nine people who have provided correct uh, bet. Uh, I have copied these nicknames over here to the list with a false comment and then I have added another comment which is basically copying the nickname and added a space at the end. This is required for my uh, for my um, tool to work properly. So I am selecting right now all the nine people, all the nine names up till the end. Yes, and we are going to hide the Chrome and I'm going to add manually the people here to the lottery. So you can see total nine people who have correctly uh, predicted that goblins will go out of the group with the first place. We have Chalao, Noob, Free RTS, Profizy, yeah, I guess you you predicted yourself makes sense, makes sense. We will we'll see if you will be as lucky as you were in the games. We have Protoss, the Random Runners, Redundant Bam, Tyre, Vero5 and Spartan. So congratulations. Let's double check uh, with the Chrome thing if this is indeed correct. Nicknames, Chalau, no. Yes, no prof is yeah, nine people, same ones, red of five. Yeah, everyone is here. Cool, no 
issues, no mistakes were made by me. Great. So I guess we can go directly to the lottery right now. And we will do it in three, two, one. Let's see who will win today. We are fighting for 200 sovereigns. Nine people predicted correctly goblins. Good luck to you guys. And the music is there. All right. Tyre, Noob, Vero, Chalo, Prittos, Vero, Prittos, Froppy, Feros, Noob, Free, RTS. It will be Noob, Free, RTS. Congratulations, man, to your victory. Well done. If you are here still with us on chat, you can write to me right now and I will send you the code. If not, don't worry. I will send you a PM over the Discord as you have provided me your Discord ID. I will send you the Discord, um, the price. So no, no worries, no problem. All good, my friend. And we can go quickly to uh, screen. Sorry for that. Yes, because uh, the, two, uh, the, the dates are not updated yet, but uh, whatever. So short reminder. Twitch drops are on for whole week until next Sunday. So don't forget to participate. I will be streaming daily uh, in the evening, but I'm Polish, so I'll be streaming in Polish. And, but you can jump in if you wish, no, no problem there. And then, of course, next Sunday, we are going to meet same time, if I recall correctly. Uh, Cripfield uh, Squad versus Eclarides and Pondgar versus Lamaland. We will be having two battles, two matches, each matchup will be best of three. So worst case scenario we will see, uh, worst case scenario for the teams. We will see six games in total, two times three. Best case scenario, if someone will do two zero, we can see four games. So we will see uh, how it will go. So team matchup one and matchup two is going to be played in first round next week and in two weeks Kitten versus Engegner and Goblins versus Nexus. So half, first half, top half of quarterfinals next week, bottom half of quarterfinals in two weeks. After that, in three weeks, we'll have semifinals and in four weeks, so still month away, which will be uh, 6th of next month, yeah. We will be having third place match and finals. Those are best of three as well. So, yeah, interesting. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Thank you all for watching, guys. We had quite a lot of viewers today, over 300 pretty much constantly, even I believe hitting 400. So very interesting teams playing today. Uh, I hope that I think you hoped for seeing three teams. Uh, I hoped as well, unfortunately, last second we got the information that will be one team will not be able to participate. So once more, uh, two teams playing, but I guess it makes it equal. It's as equal as possible. All four groups had only two teams, so as equal as possible, I guess. Yeah, amazing tournament, amazing, uh, amazing to cast, amazing to watch and amazing to work and talk with all of you guys here. Good night, Combo. Good night, Doggo. Thank you, Tyre. And yeah. Thank you very much for the good hour today. The stream time right now is three and a half hours. So I guess it's quite nice in the middle of the not too long, not too short. And yeah, uh, guys, enjoy your evening. If you are from the countries where Mother's Day is today and you have not yet called your mother, Please do, don't forget. For all others, enjoy your Sunday and uh, all upcoming weekend. And we shall see each other on first quarter finals happening next Sunday. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Enjoy. And see you next Sunday.